Okay, so I'm live there. Let me share. Um, let me share, let me share, let me share. Or pin, rather. How you doing today, though? I'm well. How are you doing? Um, how are you carrying? I'm well, too. On my end, you had a good day. Today was very... It was an energetic day for me, so I'm excited about that. I had a really good day. What about you? Um, same here. Relaxation is the key. There's someone else in the room also. Her name is Carrie Ann. Okay. Oh, yeah, I'm sharing this. I can't see it just yet. Let's see. Let's see. Poor connection. You told me how to do this. Wait, how you do that? Wait, do I do up here? Hi, Carrie Ann. Let's do see. Let us hear Carrie Ann's voice. How do you do that again? I'm new. Do you, do you click on the picture and the picture? And then enable. Invite to speak. Invite to speak. Invite to speak. I got it. I got it. Hi, Carrie Ann. How are you? Hi, how are you? Good. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I'm new to this, so... <laughs> right, me too. I was trying to find a button to let you speak with us. <laughs> Th <laughs> thanks for joining us. Um, so, all right, I have that, and I pinned everybody in. Okay, let's roll with it then. All right, so the unique difference in spirituality versus religion. Oh, I'm Kiki, by the way. Kiki love. Oh, you Kiki. Okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's... My name is Karen, but they call me Kiki, so... Kiki from oh, TikTok, right? Never knew that. Yes. Oh, okay. Nice to meet that's, you. That's me. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. That feels that's good to finally put a face. Because you have some other... um, <laughs> A goddess-type image. Yes. I, I keep myself private on TikTok because I'm not there for... I'm just there to learn and... I'm not there to share content or anything. I'm not interested in that. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. pretty cool. See, some people are just there just watching, yeah, and wanting to learn. Yeah. Yes. That's pretty cool. Yeah, That's, That's what you do, Kerr? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, dude. <laughs> okay, so... uh. Yeah, so I wanted to talk about the difference between spirituality versus religion and um, and just share my take on it and maybe it'll help somebody in their journey. You want me to go first, uh, Kurt? Yes, ma'am. It's your room. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I look at it like this here. The difference is, well, really, first of all, the similarities to me. The similarities, we, we all believe in, in source energy. We might call it different names, you know, the universe, God, uh, consciousness, higher self, even sometimes. Uh, the similarity uh, also could be that we, we, we feel as though we are part of this energy. There's no separation. This is my opinion. Um, the similarity is that it's it's a it's a knowing. Sometimes in religion, you might think it's just a feeling, but it's it's just like a knowing that God exists, that there is something greater than ourselves in in the physical reality. The difference to me, though, is just that we, when we become more spiritual. We become accountable for ourselves. We we kind of like take out the middleman, so to speak, like um, like Jesus, for example. You know, we we look at Jesus different. You know, and for me personally, I believe that every individual in the physical reality is the Christ, the Anointed One. I believe that the allegory text was not about people per se. It was about it's like stories about us. And our 
like evolution process and the journey we must take in order to evolve to our higher self or become the Christ conscious one, so to speak. And so in religion, in religion, you know, we, we, we held God accountable for this here. Like if God doesn't do anything else, he's done enough. Or we'll call on Jesus and we'll say in the name of Jesus, because if he didn't come true, it's because it wasn't God or Jesus' will, but in spirituality, he's like, no, I am a co-creator. I'm creating my reality through my thoughts, through the way that I think and the way that I feel, that unfolds my physical reality. So if I don't have it, it is simply because of me. <laughs> And I'm not going to say it's because God didn't want it because I believe now spiritually that the blessings of God are yea and amen. And it goes according to how I feel. Okay, I'm going to stop right there and, 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 and give you a chance. See where you are with it. Oh, I'm listening. It makes, it makes sense. Keep going. I mean, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean spirituality, I well, so... So for, for one, I think everyone is spiritual. I don't think everyone is religious. I think every single person or everything that was created is spiritual. And that's simply because um, we cannot exist without the energy or the spirit, as we call it. Uh, it's impossible to exist without it. So we all have to be spiritual. Exactly. Do we, uh, I think we, we use religion as a, as a, as a way we think that it's, I'm hearing myself echo. Okay. Uh, I think we use religion as a way how to get us closer to our spirituality. And we don't need anything to be a, to make us closer. I think we are really close to that, you know, as, as close as we can get. Um, but I believe there's a huge difference. Um, like I said, everyone is spiritual, but not everyone is religious. I think we look at spirituality as in if you love God, then you're spiritual, not realizing that. Everything, whether you love God or not, whether you worship Satan or worship the trees or the frogs or the water, it, it, it's, a, it's a spiritual practice anyways. You know what I mean? Right. So in spirituality, you think um, there's a certain so-called God versus um, devil? <laughs> yes? No. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's, I think that's something that was created to for 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 riot control. Right. I agree. And it works. It does. It works well. <laughs> it does. Because you'd be, you be scared to death thinking that you're going to hell. <laughs> you'd be, you'd, yeah. you'd be acting like you'd be scared and you'd be praying and you'd be really like thinking that if I, I remember when I was younger, I'd be like, I know I'm going to hell because I slept with that girl, so I know I was wrong and I'm, 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 like, I'm going straight to hell. Right. <laughs> Scared me to death. Right. But, the next, but the next day I did it again. I guess the fear wasn't strong enough. He said the next day. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. It's true. That's because fear, funny. fear is not enough. Fear ain't going to do it. Yeah, you're right about that. And that's that's what religion brings. It brings fear. It brings a sense of fear, and it puts the fear in your heart. You hear me? You, man, you'd be scared to death. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Kiki? Um, like I said, I'm. I grew up. Okay, so I grew up in a Christian family. Um, they were Adventists, so. To me, that was controlling. I couldn't do this. I couldn't do this. And I'm a free spirited person. So now I'm just learning about my spirituality. So there's a difference. For me, religion is being... I think we're losing you, Kiki. We can't hear Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I can't hear her anymore. Well, maybe when she get back to a better place, look like she muted herself. But um, 
So back to uh, the devil versus God, I believe that in spirituality, all is God. Like there is no, you know, it's just it's just vibrating at different frequencies, you know, different types of energies. But the totality is all is God. So, okay, so if you say that, so who was, so what was the serpent in the story of Adam and Eve? What was the serpent? The serpent. Can you hear me now? Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. <laughs> okay, so I had to check something on the phone. Okay, so what I'm saying is that I grew up in a Christian home. We were, we were Adventists. So that was too much control. It was, you can't do this, you can't read this, you can't eat this. You, so um, I, I got away from that. I'm a free spirited person. I like to be free to make my own decisions. So now I'm um, learning about spiritual spirituality and it's freeing and without labels, just... So to me, religion is controlling and spirituality, you're just free to be, <laughs> Yeah, I guess. I agree. You know what, Kiki, Kiki, where are you from? Originally Jamaica, but I live in Florida now. Okay. <laughs> you know, I used to be a seventh Adventist, so I grew up seventh Adventist. Yeah, it was too much. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm thinking it's, it's ridiculous. You hear me? Yeah. I, but, but, but you know what, though? Even as an adult, to be honest, I was a deacon and a youth pastor <laughs> in, in my church. Yeah. <laughs> so... But after a while, I was like, what the hell am I doing, man? This yeah, they're trying to get me on the choir. I did it for a while. I was like, I can't. I can't do that stuff. <laughs> it just never resonated with me. And as soon as I became of age to, you know, kind of how your parents are, they're so straight. When I became of age, I got out of the church, and they were mad, and I didn't yeah. care. <laughs> yeah. I left. Yeah. 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 My mom was sitting there, too. Yeah. So, so. Brzee, So if so if you don't believe in the devil and 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 God, what was the serpent's part of the story? The serpent, in my opinion, in the biblical text, was Kundalini energy. Because the really? say the serpent, in my opinion, you know, it came forth to bring the knowledge. Like the it 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 it's it pretty much it, it gave you that so-called choice that we look at as consciousness as being choosing between the good and the evil. And so I just look at the serpent. Anytime the serpent would brought forth or spoke of in biblical text, I just automatically go to Kundalini energy, rising to your higher self. And it also says, surely you will not die. You will, in so many words, it was like, so many, surely you will not die. You would have the knowledge like the other gods, plural. So you have that higher consciousness of, you know, like the higher gods. That's my so interpretation. You don't think that, so, so you don't think the serpent lied? But see, if, you, if, if you're thinking like it's kundalini energy and if you're in a spiritual aspect, you're not thinking lie versus true. You're thinking all is God. And you're thinking there's no right, there's no wrong. There's no, no deception, so to speak. So in the biblical text, pretty much the serpent was not a negative force. Not in my opinion, no. It's sort of, for me, I learned that it was a negative force ever in, since I was in the church. That's in what the I church, learned. yeah. In the church, yeah. Yes. But if you're in spirituality yeah. and all is God, the serpent energy is just like God expressing itself at a lower frequency. Is just not being love at that frequency, you know? I mean, just that's just my thoughts. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's, it's Kundalini. Can you explain, because I don't think everybody knows what Kundalini is. Like, what, what, is, what is Kundalini energy? It is, well, it's like this, uh, it's like a, a energy that lives inside of us. We all have, like, we were all born with this, um, this little, 
backpack, so to speak. Like it's like internal backpack. We all can equip, so to speak. And so when we're a baby, we have this soft spot on top of our head. We have a soft spot on top of our head that um, has this, um, it secretes this, uh, it's called the sebrum, a sebrum column, I believe, Se sebrum fluid, Se sebrum fluid. I can't pronounce it right. Anyway, it's really, really soft. It is really this soft um, a fluid in our head. And we have a lot of it when we're a baby because we, when we're a baby, we're, you know, really just coming from another realm. And so we, you know, we see other energies and other dimensions, whatever. So throughout our life, well, every month rather, when the moon is in your sun cycle, you are you secrete this fluid if you, um, you know, have a clean diet and not losing all of your energy or your power from you know having so much sex and you know supposedly being a just person, like right. And so one year, one one experience when the moon is in your sun cycle this sebum um fluid is supposed to go down you know your, the skull all the way down to the base of the um of your um uh, root chakra and it rises again this is about this is really the story of jesus rising on the third day so to speak and when it rises again this is like renewing of the blood you know, being born again, you know, instead of going into your mother's womb, this is how you become born again. And so that they call this process the Kundalini awakening, because when you're born again, now you are at a higher percentage of your brain capacity and you are able to see you, you look like the Christ conscious one, pretty much. You have this all knowing nothing by any means shall harm you and you have powers. So you just you're high yourself now. And that's a Kundalini experience. And so that's why we see the serpent on the old pharaohs on their foreheads, whatever, because pretty much what it's saying is that your third eye is like open to other realms, which is really your first eye, the eye that you had before you came in physical form, the all seeing eye. Yeah. That's, that's the best way I could explain it. So, okay. So if, okay, so if you explain that way, so from Ma from from Genesis to Malachi, like who was Moses? Um, like when Moses put his staff down and Pharaoh put his staff down, and the serpent came and you know, the snakes or whatever. Like what energy was those? Was was God playing against itself? Let's see. I, I got you. You really taking me back to the biblical text now because I don't even <laughs> some of them stories I'm done with. So when, what was going on with Moses? Moses threw his staff down. That was around with the a commandments time or something, right? Yeah. So you remember when Moses went to set his people free, right? Mm -hmm. And he went to the Pharaoh and said, "Hey, Pharaoh, set my people free. You know what I'm saying? Get them free." And then Pharaoh was like, "No." So Moses was like, "Listen." If you don't do it, I'm going to show you the God I serve. And he put his staff down and he turned into a serpent. Mm -hmm. So Pharaoh called his people and put their, his staff down and they, he turned into another serpent. And Moses rod, the serpent for Moses ate the um, serpent for Pharaoh. Right. And says that God is a higher power. Yeah, because Moses' serpent was Kundalini energy. But Pharaoh's them serpent, they were just doing like magical tricks or whatever. And it was like the, the war against the serpent, so to speak, or I guess Moses having more power or whatever, or being conscious versus Pharaoh and them doing tricks or whatever. Yeah. I don't know about tricks because it's the same serpent that came from the stick. So but I, it was, I, I was didn't, like, didn't Pharaoh's army have like a magician that, came, that he called in from my recollection of that story? Well, they look at Moses like a magician too, because he did the same thing. Oh, well, Moses was anointed. Pharaoh people wasn't powerful in that area. See, but we say Moses people was anointed because that's how the story said it. Mm -hmm. So, so we, so when you look from at the story from an, an angle of religion, it says Moses. You know, Moses was anointed, but that, but that's according to the religion that we actually are. When I'm how. how Go ahead. Uh, Go ahead, Ben. No, no when I was but singing, saying, oh, oh, I thought you were telling me to go. 
I'm sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. When I said anointed, I mean he he was the one that was rising in his self, rising to Kundalini self in, in as far as spirituality is concerned. I didn't feel that way from the story that what I re, what I remember of the story that Pharaoh and his army was. They were, you know, they were still at lower self. You know, they were still in holding people hostage, whatever. They were still in still, you know, being in control, root chakra type energies, power driven type energy. That's lower self to me. In comparison yeah. to where Moses was in his journey, hearing a voice, he was he was like awakening to his higher self. I mean, that's how I look at it. Now, everybody look at the biblical text in different ways, but that's how I read it. So what, what do you think the point is for those biblical texts? I really believe that there's all um, different places of us in our journey. Like, um, like, like right now, uh, I'm reminded of in Ecclesiastics, I believe it is. Oh, ye dry bones, when it was speaking to the dead bones. Oh, ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. I will cause breath to enter into you. Breath is meaning for life. I will cause breath to enter into you and ye shall live. So now in this Aquarius uh, age, I believe the great awakening is happening. And people, they're dry bones and being sleep. They're coming to consciousness. I believe everybody goes through this point in their journey, just like everybody was a job that they have lost something and felt like they wanted to turn their back on God at one point. And they had people around them, like his friends and his wife saying, man, just curse God and die. But they, they kept the faith and things got better for them. And then they, they begin to be blessed in their life. I believe everything in the, I believe also that like uh, Jesus, for example, was like Adam. I believe it was stories of Jesus reincarnating over and over and, you know, from Adam to Jesus, to his higher self, to the Christ conscious one and realizing love heals all, you know, and that he got, he renewed his mind and he got to, went to higher consciousness and he was able to go through any realm or any dimension like our, our energetic beings are equipped to be once we come to higher self, we'll be able to travel to any dimension and come to this realm at free will if we choose to. I believe it's us. The whole text. I don't separate it from us. I believe that it tells us about these times. I believe there's so many hidden truths in there um, about right now. Like when the disciples ask Jesus, um, when will be the age of that coming. I believe that this is the age of Aquarius of Jesus coming, but it is not a Jesus, a white man in the sky that's coming forth. I believe that it is a, um, a energetic shift where all mankind will um, wake up from the great sleep. You know, that stiff neck generation that was supposedly cursed. I think it was in De Deuteronomy and be put to a, a, um, a sleep and go to a foreign land, so to speak. I believe that that was us in a great sleep. But now because it's the age of Aquarius, because of this particular season, we're waking up and that's why everybody is into consciousness. And, you know, well, not everybody, but people are coming in masses into consciousness. And it's just telling us about the journey here. Everything. But, Kiki, what do you think about that? <laughs> Okay, so, um, okay, with religion, I grew up in a church, okay? I went to church just because it's what I was supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And I never resonated with it. Now, I believe, <laughs> I believe that our mind is our own little world, and we create whatever we want with our mind. With what, whatever the Bible says, I, I don't know anything. I just, and I, I believe that people are sheep. They follow whatever people are saying. Everybody has a perspective about what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. I believe they're all going to die one day. <laughs> I don't want to complicate my life. I'm not a follower. I don't like to follow what everyone says. So the, the bottom line is, I'm just here trying to live, <laughs> create my life the best I can, and follow follow my source, my inwardly source. Follow myself, follow my guidance, and enjoy the moments. That's how I feel. I don't. I don't because it's 
it's like they're a bad person walking into the person is mad because they're they see things that we can't see now you bridget is talking about what you believe with the bible and that's okay mm -hmm. and it could be right because it's your world your perspective so you it's, see it right so i respect that I, I yeah so for me i just i hear so many different perspectives it, it it's kind of confusing so i just leave it alone and just <laughs> i you know i i just I'm just spending time myself. Like I said, I'm learning. I, I um, listen to you. I listen to Kirk. I, I feel the connection with you guys. So I, I'm open-minded. I'm here to learn. I, I just, I don't know what to believe. I just follow my instincts, I guess. Yeah. That's you could do sometimes, man. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, so when, you look at it, when you look at it, do we know anything? We don't really know anything. Right. Exactly. Right. No. We don't. We can't. We don't. We wasn't here. We wasn't here and, and I believe that we came here to be free to learn. And if people say God is love, and He gave us everything on earth, our source gives us everything on earth to just enjoy and to live. I think that's what it is. We can't take any of anything with us. So in the moment, in this time, just live according to how you feel or whatever it is for you, and keep it moving. Yeah, that's true. You know. You know, I do think that we take something with us. To be honest with you, I, I think it makes I think it makes sense. Okay. Um, I think because I said that too. But when you when you look at life, uh -huh. you look at when the body dies, something else don't die, and yeah. the the soul don't die, right? So yeah. Okay. Die. If the soul don't die, then the energy that's that's the soul continues. Uh -huh. So whatever whatever we did in this life, it it. It still carries over to the next because karma don't stop. Karmic energy is continuous. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, so I'm saying. So I believe that we carry something. So okay. we have to. I, it, it cannot end here. Okay. It, it's impossible to end here. So I think that's why we gotta be very careful uh, now because I, um, there's a lot of reincarnation that states if you don't if until you get it right here you're gonna keep coming back yeah right i've heard that you know? yeah and and i believe that if we and you know this is why i'm on this journey of of just not that i don't want to come back because i don't mind coming back here but it's i think it's a beautiful world yes um but hell <laughs> if you don't have to because think about all the endless possibilities out there in other realms i i see what yeah. you're saying you don't mind but i feel like this is my last rodeo with all yeah. my knowing with all my knowing i feel like my last rodeo for being i don't want to say captive but having to come here i believe that uh, i will be able to come and have a choice to come and maybe help and, and you know be multi-dimensional i really believe that uh, yeah. i know that <laughs> that's amazing too but like you were saying Bridget, um i believe the the old testament and actually i believe every book is is on levels of where you are i think every book that was written is about you and you alone there's nobody uh, else exactly it's about uh, it's about no one else or no people and and maybe there was maybe there was uh -huh. a, key, a person named adam maybe there was one name abraham maybe there was one name you know uh jonah and, and on, on other people yeah but but i believe the reason why it's in, the, it's in that book is because it's of every stage of a man represents from adam which is the first when he was born in a perfect state the garden of eden because the garden of eden represents perfection right it represents when you are born in that purity, in that that perfect harmony, and you are one with God. You are only one with God, mm -hmm. right? And if you look at the story of, of of Adam and Eve, it speaks about you specifically. You know, yeah. like when you pay attention, Adam and Eve is you. It, it has to be you because when you look at Adam and Eve, they were born in the Garden of Eden. They were born in the naked, right? They were naked. They like I see my daughter all the time. She's butt naked and she don't give a damn. She's running around the place, touching her booty, you know, <laughs> running around. <laughs> okay. She doesn't care because she is a peace. She is at the at that purity, that 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 perfection. 
the Garden of Eden in her mind. Mentally, she is perfect. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then we are the serpent. We're telling her, don't do this. This is what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. And you, you get into all. Use the body. And mm -hmm. this is right from wrong. This is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So I'm, I'm, I am instilling this, this, this knowledge of good and evil into my daughter. Mm -hmm. Right. So if I tell my daughter, if I tell my daughter, listen, Leah, if you do this, you are a good girl. In her mind, if she does does this, she's a bad girl. It's just something opposite. So when she does that bad thing, I use that judgment. She hides from me because now she starts to feel, oh my God, my you know my dad is gonna be mad. Mm -hmm. you see what I'm saying? Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So now when God came to Adam and said, Adam, where the hell are you at? I, hey, you know, I just realized I was naked. Hey, I'm hiding from you because I think I done wrong. No, you was doing the same crap for the. I don't know how long Adam and Eve lived before we call it sin, mm -hmm. but maybe millions of years, maybe two, maybe a trillion years. We don't know how long they lived, but you was doing the same actions and the same behavior and the same clothing, nakedness. But now all of a sudden, you think that you know something. Here you are hiding yourself. Mm -hmm. And knowledge is what F's us up because when you bite of the fruit, what happens is that when you bite of a fruit, the seed of the fruit grows, right? So it grows in the mind. The seeds just growing. So when you bite of the fruit, and that's what the fruit is, is the knowledge. Knowledge will F you up if you don't use it properly. Mm -hmm. Because with knowledge, judgment has to come with it. Because now that you have knowledge, you think you know something. Now, the ones who don't know, Something is wrong with them. Like, you don't know this? Like, you stupid. Dude, were you retarded? Dude, are you dumb? So knowledge brings forth judgment. Uh, it has to. It, it has to. So Adam and Eve just represents you. So uh, just just like how you were born and that, and then Moses. When, you know, it came to Moses. When, when Moses, and, and like I was saying, I believe Moses was you and Pharaoh was you. And, you know, fighting for right. to be set free. Right. And, hey, here is Moses saying, hey, set my people free. Hey, Pharaoh, which is, which, which, is, which is another part of you where religion and politics and culture and tradition gets you, say, no, man, I, I can't set them free. I can't. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I can't because if I set her free, then who, who am I going to be? I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be in the wilderness. I'm going to be walking for 40 years not knowing who I am. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what happened. The people, the chosen people was in the wilderness walking around lost. As soon as something happened or they meet the water, they wanted to come back. Just like we do all the time. This is what we do. And we listen to these stories and we say, man, this is stupid. You tell me that if God, if God told them to go in the wilderness and God set them free, why do you want to go back? They're stupid. This is what we do every single day. We're yeah. stupid. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's <us>. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's you know, why I believe that all of the stories pertain to us. Like I believe yeah. them to be allegory texts. Even if, even if we say that, okay, we said that we don't believe that those were people. But even if we um, say that, you know, the Adam and Eve was like Anunnaki type beings, who, and we go toward that story, it still. <laughs> It still can be used as if it's us, though, because we're going through every yeah. last one of those scenarios here in the physical reality. Yeah. Every That's last it. one of us at a certain point in our in our life, we go through being a Job or a, a Paul or a, a Peter or <laughs> Abraham, somebody, <laughs> you know, yeah. So that's why I like to apply it to myself. And I also and, and that's why. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, continue. And I also go even farther than that and apply it for when they're talking about the blood as being, you know, a pure, a purified blood, like as if they were talking about melanin, actually, because they often talked about those um, Pharisees and Sadducees and marrying into different bloodlines. And I vaguely remember somebody was about to die and on his deathbed, he was telling his son or whatever don't marry into this particular bloodline and stuff. And so for me, when I make sense of it, I believe that that being tainted blood, lower frequency energy beings, blood, 
and um, and I pertain that to uh, feel melanin versus you melanin, and um, and not not in a um, a racist way, but in a way of when your blood, like for example, us when we become vegan, and our blood is more pure, then most people become awakened at that point. They stumble into consciousness at that point because you know the gut and the brain are intertwined and so we have gut feelings and um toxicity inside of us when our gut is you know out of balance but then when we clear the blood and clear out our gut now we can think clearly and now we can actually um decalcify that pineal gland this you know the larger part of us and see finally with that eye again but that's just my thoughts though <laughs> Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. But you know what, though? But that's why we have to go back. Now that we finish with the religious part, we have to go back and read the Bible again because the, 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 there's a message in there. Yeah, and every there's time you read it, it you have new meaning each time. Yeah. I, I know yeah. I've read it over 30 times. <laughs> I'm tired of reading it, though. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, there's a message in the book. Because you now when you go back to the story and you say, wait, oh no, this is me. You know, what 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 did I do then? You know, like what 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 did I do as Adam? What did I do, you know, as as Job? What did I do as Abraham? What did I do as Lot's wife or Lot? What what did I do as Boaz? Like there, there, there's a story there and maybe, just maybe, now that I'm thinking about it, shoot, I even thought about it before. What if, listen, when you're watching a movie, when you're watching a movie on the TV, the producers and the directors are so powerful. And what, how is it so powerful is that they're making the movie, and it's like, they make a movie, right? Um, and as you watch, especially when the screen is, when the screen is a huge screen, like you go into the theater, when the light comes off and the movie starts, you are not separated from the movie. You are actually the character that you choose to be. You are that woman who was being abused, or you will. You are that man who, who who's gonna shoot the bad guy at the end. You are. You take on a character, and that's why tears come to your eyes. That's why emotion comes to you. That's why you feel good at the end. That's why you 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 feel weak in the middle when you are when the bad guy is beating up the good guy. You know what I mean? Like you feel every single thing because you become you actually in the movie. This is why what this is why movies are great. This is why movies distract you from your entire life. Because once you sit down and focus on the movie, all you see is you. Uh, see what I'm saying? Now, what if what if when we read the Bible, what if it's supposed to be about us? <laughs> what if yeah. us? What if we actually put ourselves in those books so that we could see and and and, and understand? Maybe the journey might be understood better definitely that's what i do because ever since i was a little girl because i came up in a religious background where everybody was a pastor or something in the church i played so many roles i lived in the church i probably was born on the front pew of the church <laughs> I was, <laughs> i'm so i'm conceived i'm, I'm conceived there too <laughs> i know yeah both of them my reverend lowdown my daddy was reverend lowdown probably you know <laughs> That's probably why my mama liked them. But no, <laughs> but seriously, though, no. and because of that, because I was so into the church, I would go home all the time, you know, me being, I wanted to be a really, really good Christian girl and read my Bible and study. And I never forget, I said about those, um, those Israelites, I was like, these people sound like some stubborn black people that I know, you know? Every time yeah. I would read, I would read the Bible from Genesis all the way to Revelations over and over, and I just begin to have new meaning over and over each time because I really wanted to understand it. And in the beginning, I knew nothing, but every time I went back, you know, and reread it, I obtained a little bit more. And then, until I just put it in to um, in a percept in a perception like it's me, you know, they're talking about me here. I gotta get this personal story or this personal understanding for myself and stop trying to see who the Israelites were and who this was. 
how does this apply to me? And yeah. That, and that's what I did. Because it makes sense. Because, and like, I, I use simple um, illustrations. Like, when you watch a movie and you don't put yourself in the movie, then you won't even feel the movie. You won't even like the damn movie. You're like, uh, You're right. Man, what is, how long is this going to play? You know, you know what I mean? Like, damn it. Movie long as hell. But when you actually involved in the movie and you put yourself in the movie, you become the movie. So now you understand. Now you become one. So now you, everything they do when you do it, you feeling like you're doing it. So when we look at the Bible and these scriptures, the reason why we don't understand the scriptures is because we don't, we separate ourselves from the scriptures. We think that's them and this is us. You know, our God, uh, that was Moses. Yeah. You know, this is me. So I cannot understand. But in reality, maybe if we look at this damn book, and so this is me all through. Even when you hit Jesus, this is me too. Because this is me when I evolved into the understanding, you know, of, of love. Instead of doing just empty actions like I did, you know, sacrificing certain things. You know, because I, I, because I believe those sacrifices that happened in the Old Testament, those sacrifices, sacrificing the lamb for the sin. When I you know, asked Christ, you know, he became the sacrifice. So now my life, everything that I, if I do this, it's sacrificing my entire peak. Like, maybe we should just look at the dang books and just say, this is me, regardless. So, and then mm -hmm. you understand it better. And that's when religion will cut out because you understand it now based on your life, not just on a specific uh, uh -huh. stuff that's going on. Yeah. See okay. what I'm saying? Right. Okay. Because we could, we could, we could, we could also apply for to things outside of us. It has so many different ways to be unfolded. If we, if we go in, and we apply to us, we can become like the Christ that, you know, we could walk on water. We could rise to our higher self. You know, we could be a sacrifice of letting, basically letting our old man die. And, in you know, that's the sacrificial offering, so to speak, and becoming that new man because we have ascended. But then if we look outside of ourselves and apply to things in the physical reality, you know how they say, okay, rising on the third day is equivalent to the um, the winter solstice. And the sun, or if we're looking outside, the sun of God is really externally the S-U-N sun. The Lord thy God is a sun in shield. And so we could apply it outside to things in our physical real reality and inside to us because collectively all is God. That's why I feel like they have so many ways of understanding it because all is God. And um, <laughs> and it's interesting you would say something about the uh, movies because even certain conscious movies, you you can sit there and you could become that main character and better understand that the, this journey is not exempt with showing you all aspects of God and showing you how you fit in in every role like when i watch like conscious movies like neo for example like lucy like bird box like us you know those movies if you sit there and you really get into it you could you could sit there and see how they're telling you that it you know it's time for you to rise you are the one o n e and you are the neo n e o you know it's it's just so many ways that it is in front of you like you you left yourself so many billboards per se so you won't stay in the great sleep and you will one day rise damn you're watching these movies huh <laughs> <laughs> i just i never even thought about me you or any you and or any i have never even thought about it you see that because you, you got to get into it when we, but that's another thing about consciousness when you conscious you you could see all kind of coding and you could just unravel all kind of things and apply you could even remember i was telling you about little cartoons you could even see consciousness in the cartoon songs it's like everything's yeah. telling you everything there's a message in everything yeah it's everything. A, it's always a message yeah and i love there's that always a message but you know, the, the the message is multiplied because your mind, so the message is always multiplied because your mind is, is just so wide open now. So now you could actually, everything makes sense to you. Like every, like you be like looking at things, but I be looking at things, I'm like, shoot, did my daughter just do this? Oh, so this is what this means in life. Like I use every single thing to teach me something. 
Yeah. Like everything is just like, like just, just, just like that quote. What it says is, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. Right. You know, when you're ready, you find messages in everything that you do. There's a message. There's an answer. There's a there's something. That, there's an understanding. There's a lesson. There's something always available. Yeah. One thing about religion, religion will block that damn oh, thing. Oh man! I put a different twist. You give that crap. You gonna give pop just by questioning it, though. You know. <laughs> You get popped. I done got popped so many times in church till it was just like, you know what, whatever. I didn't even care no more. And that fear stops you from even wanting to question and stop a lot of people, you know? It was either because the word said or pastor said or just shut up because, you know, you you being a smart pants or whatever about a mouth. Yeah. But, you know, it's funny um, that like, I remember growing up too. That, like I said, I was a Seventh Day Adventist. Well, I, I was I grew up as one. And you know, when you ask questions, you know, you you wasn't supposed to because if you ask questions, you thought God was going to be disappointed in you. Yeah. <laughs> this this God that we, yeah. we 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 put in human tense, the, the, in human form, like like God is annoyed when you ask God. But I was, but even in First Thessalonians chapter five, when it says, "But test." Everything. Every, he says to test everything or prove all things. Or, um, depending on which um, thing, he says, but examine everything. Yeah. Um, you know? So he's telling you to question every damn thing. Don't If it don't make sense, it's because something is, something is missing. And mm. a lot of things don't make sense when, you, when you're talking about religion. They like, just mm. don't make sense. You know? like, and then when you ask questions, you're like, oh, well... But we have a bunch of people now, people who are always preaching the word. And, you know, they come on my page all the time, or even on my live, talk about Jesus is the answer. I'm like, to what question? <laughs> so, you know, I can't stand it. Yeah. <laughs> like, what's the, what was the to question? The, to the question that they're scared to even ask. Huh? To the question that they're even scared to ask. You know? <laughs> it's like you. It's like you taking a test. Like my son taking a test two plus two and he put Jesus. But I'm saying that like, people like to say these things because it's 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 gotten so popular and everybody says it, so it's like it's accepted, but it make no damn sense if you think about it. He's the answer to what? To to what question? To uh, People That's what I was saying people. earlier, where people are like sheep. They just follow. They don't question. And that's yeah. how I, I grew up in the church. It just, it's what pastor says. That's, that's what yeah. it is. It's what the Bible says on the surface. They don't dig deeper and have an open mind. So, like I said, no, I'm open. I'm learning. I got out of it because it just didn't make sense to me. Yeah, man. Yeah. So, yeah. You, you tell me I have to come here every week. <laughs> from, from the age of 10 I mean, from the age of 2 to 68 years old I'm here every week I want to miss one week let you me worried about me? let Seriously? me tell you no one week man we had we had choir rehearsal we had yeah. Saturday <laughs> meetings Bible study, Bible study yeah. funerals prayer. weddings oh it was just yeah, always hour. something prayer hour yeah I used to hate. I used to hate my church. You hear me? I used to hate the damn church. But I, Adventist, what a, Adventist is the most boring church you can yeah, ever go to. Man. I swear to you. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. I thought Catholic I, uh, was the one that was uh, really boring. Well, yeah, I think. Yeah. You know what? That, that might be it. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> Catholic was it. just hard. That was uh, hard to stay awake. I hate the church, though. I, you know, it's, you know, Saturday morning, everybody mad. Everybody don't, you know, all my sisters, my brothers just get an attitude because nobody wants to go to the boring church. Nope. You can't clap, you can't sing, you can't dance, you can't do nothing. Nothing. You know, at least, yeah, but at least when you go to the Baptist church or something with your friends or the Pentecostal church, everybody is like dancing and twerking and stuff. And you yeah. can't twerk in church. Yeah. <laughs> in my church. You know? It was horrible. But you know what? I feel like it was necessary, though. I really huh? do. I believe that it was necessary, though, like in our um, transition oh, no, to man. spirituality. 
that you go through the religious side of it first, but you're actually supposed to, it's just my belief again here, yeah, you're actually supposed to like graduate from the religion side of it. Just like in the biblical text, I think that I look at that when I am reminded of Jesus, when he was talking to the disciples saying that he, you know, he would go or whatever. Even he left the disciples and he told them that they now had to be teachers for men or whatever in so many words. So he left because he had rose to his higher self. And so they hadn't rose yet. They didn't have, you know, their Kundalini experience just yet. So they were still just, you know, going to be the teachers until they rise and on and on and on. But we all should be graduating from the church. And I don't believe that the religious people know that part. But I, I think the church traps you. And so I don't think someone said if you if you have a child and you let the child free without teaching him anything, they will, he will find his way. But the journey of life is to unknow. You know how hard this. You know how hard this to is to unknow all this crap, like to unlearn these crap. It is very hard to unlearn things because once you learn all this garbage, it it, it creates an identity. Yeah, yeah, yeah you, you know right. what I mean. And so, uh, yeah, so now here we are, 30, 40, 50 years old, like questioning, scared to death to even think about changing the church because you think that man, what if I'm going hell for real? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and that's what have people scared, saying, man. "Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna just stick it out. I'm gonna just stay in religion, you know, because I'm scared of the hell thing, you know." <laughs> <laughs> man, they put so much fear in us. Yeah, I, mean, I, I listen. You know how long it took me when I was starting my journey of enlightenment? It took me. Listen, I was scared. Death. I was scared. Yeah, I even had dreams, like you know, dreams of me just talking to God, and God is like, "You going to hell?" I'm like, "God, dang it, really?" So I won't. <laughs> well, see, if we, if you would have known that was your own subconscious mind thoughts that you put there, then it would have been easy, you know. Yeah, but but nobody, because, no, yeah, yeah, you're right. But that's nothing that you could understand because exactly. in all reality is what you're dreaming and what you're dreaming you think is real anyways. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. So it's like you're trapped. You're trapped in an identity that benefits you nothing. Yeah. And not only do you get to that fear part, but you get so confused. I remember yeah. one night like it was yesterday, I went to, I was saying, this was when I was about to say my prayers. I was like, look, <laughs> Jesus, God, look, the devil, Yahshua, Yahweh. I, I was saying all kind of names. I was like, look, I don't even know your name. I just must not have cried. I said, I don't even know your name, but I know something is out there. <laughs> It's scary, man. Just help me figure this thing out because I want to know. I want to call you by your right name and I don't want to disrespect you, okay? <laughs> but, but this is what I'm saying, though. Everyone puts, for, from my understanding, everyone put a label or name to things. So I just say source. I just, for me. I, yeah, that's what I do, too. You have to God some type of source. Because, and that's confusing. You know, you, you have all these names. I know at the bottom line, it's, it comes down to source, but people just name this one thing. So many names. It's, it's too much for my little brain. It's... And that's what makes it so complicated to come out of religion, too, you know? And so yeah. and, and so after doing that, you know, you come out of religion and you, you're searching and you're trying to find yourself and, and you know, better understand where you're going to fit in. And then you, for me, I stumbled upon those Hebrew Israelites. And um, then, you know, that felt a little bit like a little kind of wrong to me how they were on the corner saying certain people was going to get their chance to get raped and stuff. That kind of thing didn't sit well with me. And I'm like, no, no, no. So, so coming out of religion, what I'm saying here is that it teaches you how to not go in too deep into the waters because religion already had me with the devil and all of this and going to hell. It had me with right. those scare tactics. 
So everything that I stumbled upon after it, I would just go in and I'll pull out the little nuggets that I want and I'll leave it behind. I don't want to be no um, Israelite, you know? I, I don't I don't need no title. When you start giving me a name and saying I got to do this here, I'm out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't like that. Yeah. yeah. That's where I'm at. That's where I'm at with my journey. I'm just, like I said, I'm learning and being open-minded and um yeah yeah i'm looking for something i'm looking for something to because um you asked about the name right uh -huh. what like, name do like you say kurt i never heard you say a name huh what name do you say i never heard you say a name let me let me let me um you, let me let me tell you why I don't say a name, okay? Okay. Hold on. Um, because it makes so. Here is what this says. It says that. <laughs> it, it says that the way that can be told is not the eternal way. And the name that can be named is not the eternal name. If if you can't see something, you cannot put a name to it. Name right. is for names are for temporary things. You put a name to it. Like oh, us, I like see. a rock, like a stone. I see. But a name but a name that lasts forever how can you put a name to it? Something that you can't see or understand that was here for millions and billions of years. Mm -hmm. There's no name for it. <laughs> what does it we say to that? You know, huh? Where does it say to that? Where you get it at from a book? So, yeah, this is the, the Tao Te Ching. Oh, I figured that. The it's Tao. The, yeah, it's yeah. the, it's the um, Kiki, this is the most ancient, this one of the most ancient books ever written. Okay. By Lat Zhao. Um, it, this was written about 500 years before the Bible. <clears throat> oh, okay. <clears throat> yeah, but the, it's a very it's a very intense book. It's only 81 um, verses. Okay. Um, but it, it just says the name that can be named it cannot be an eternal name. So you think that you know who God is or what God is or understand that, but yet how can you understand something that you can't see, you can't touch, you can't hear, you can't, you never right. experience? It is impossible. And if you can't understand it, how can you give it a name? And right. we think that we, you know, we think that we know. Like somebody commented on my thing and said, "I don't like what you call God, the universe." I said, "Listen, you don't. I don't care what you like. That, that's your business. I'm not to my video because you want me. <laughs> you want me call God by your terminology." Like, like you know his name. Like you was here when the right. life started consciously. Like you wasn't here consciously. You probably were here, but you don't know that you were here. Mm -hmm. So how can you know? How can do you know God? You know, like everybody say, I know God. God told me. This is when when it was. This is why I tell people: if you use God name before you tell me God told me, if if <laughs> you come to me and you say God told me anything, I don't want to hear it. Because I didn't yeah. fact you lying because God didn't told you nothing because what you're listening to, how you know it's God? How you have you ever heard God's voice? Right. How you understand God? How do you know how to decipher? How you how, how do you think? Why do you think that you know God? What if what if there's no God? Like what if exactly. what if the idea is yeah. I mean, what yeah, if it don't I exist? Thought about that. What if it only exists in your mind? It just in exactly. your mind. It's it's exactly. mind. Yeah. What if you only exist because they told you that it exists? Or no, that's why you believe it. That's why you believe so, it. Somebody told you that crap. Yeah. Yeah, you that's know? true. And then too. they put a name to it. Jehovah, Jireh, and all this Allah. They put oh, a name to it. Yes, that's why I feel like everyone is sheep. They just follow what people say. And I, I can't be like that. I, I like my own. I like to hear from myself. I like to learn from myself. But it, 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 it never made sense to me. But even with that in mind, if God did tell that other person, why God didn't tell the individual? Ask myself the same question. They used to use that game a lot up in church, though. They would all, you know, when they go to prophesy or whatever, God said such and such. Well, why didn't God tell me, though? Exactly. Yep. I asked myself that question. Yeah. 
And, and, and do you know why that is too? You know how many times, you know how many wars that was fought because God told somebody to do this? Uh -huh. God always told someone to kill people or to this. Yeah. It's always God. So which yeah. God is it? Like, he tell me, so that's why when somebody comes to me, like, like people like to read me a lot. People like to give me readings. Uh -huh. Because, you know, they hear I'm conscious, you know, yeah. or they think I'm conscious. Yeah. And they think I'm awakened, so they think I welcome readings and tarot card readings. Listen, don't I don't want to hear nothing about the future because the future ain't real. It don't right. exist, and I I don't know what I'm doing. And I, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. That's boring. You know what I mean? You know, boring it is to know what's gonna happen. No, yeah. surprise me, damn it, surprise me. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know what I mean? So people are always yeah, I, this is what's gonna happen to you. Listen, you keep it crap to yourself because if if life is revealed about me to you. Something is wrong. Something uh -huh. is off. Okay. Uh -huh. So what about um what about prophecies? So remember in in church, like how you know that would happen evangelists that will come and prophesy. So you think that when they prophesy to the people, the congregation, that that word that they spoke was embedded in their subconscious mind of that person and they brought it forward? A lot of times those words Okay, have you ever heard somebody tell a story that, you know what, I asked God this and God told me, wait, wait a minute, you should do this. Oh, well, I don't know which God telling him this. I don't know where to get this idea from, but God is saying, wait, wait a minute. The word for today is focus on some kind of word, the word for today, and God told him something. And I'm like, I don't listen to those kind of stuff because I can't because I'm like, well, I don't know what God, how are you talking to God? You know, like, why is God talking to you? You can't even understand the level of consciousness of a man. You think that you can understand God's voice? Come on, man. No, I don't think that makes sense. I think that whatever you accept in your subconscious becomes real. So when a doctor yeah. tells you that, if a yes. doctor tells you, you know, you have six months to die. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. He's, not a, he's not a prophet, but what yeah. it is. He planted the crop in your subconscious mind. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> he planted the seed. Yeah, I true. believe yeah. that too. Yeah. I believe that. Yeah. And so as a man think it, he becomes. Because when you believe yeah. that, that that you're going to die, your body makes way. Yeah. It, yes. it creates a way. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah. do I believe in prophecy? Prophecy from God? 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 Why, what is God? How did God come here? How is God talking to you? How do you know how to understand that voice? How do you understand? Why do you think he exists? God exists because you created him in your mind. I mean, in, in all reality, in all reality, no, I don't want to get deep, but in all reality, you create God. God didn't create you. You created God. That's why you give God a bunch of identities. He knows all the hairs on my head. You think God is worried about your damn hair on your head? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you are a mess, man. You are a mess. I'm saying. I'm saying. Hey, hi, Jay. How are you doing? Hey, you want to bring up Jake? Hi, Jay. Okay. Yes. Hello. Oh, here she go. Hi. Good night. How's everyone doing? Good evening. Good. 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 Thanks for joining us. But yeah. No, but Bridget. Yeah. Think about it, right? We don't. We have no idea what God is. We have no <laughs> idea. I, but we all have our. We have no, I guess, real idea. But we have all an individual idea, and that's why my because idea, I always created. because I created it. Yes, and that's why I always create my idea wrapped around energy. Instead of a man per se, I just call it energy. Yeah, we give God some that we can see, feel, touch, hear. We give God a bunch of people, our personalities. It's it understands me. You know, all the hairs in your head is numbers. You know, God knows all your pain, and He knows all your fears. And he knows everything about you. What if God don't know you? What, what if it's a lie? <laughs> exactly. What if, <laughs> what if you are so funny to me. Our mind is powerful. And growing up in a church, it was confusing to me. It never, 
they were preaching and saying. So in my adult life, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm at this age and I, I'm, I'm just learning all these new things. And I, come to, I came to the conclusion that if people say, oh, if there's source and I'm of source, if there's such a thing, in source, that means I can create, um, I can do all these miraculous stuff as they say, then instead of um, focusing on someone outside of myself, mm-hmm. just look within. That's why I said I, I, I don't, I, I learn and I take these things, but the conclusion to me is I'm just gonna um, learn what I need to learn, look within myself, know that mm-hmm. I'm powerful. I told someone that I'm a god and they look at me like I'm crazy. But I said, if, I, if there's God and I'm from God, then I could do what God does. Mm-hmm. So, Definitely. So that's where I'm at. <laughs> At this point in my life. So, That's yeah. a beautiful place to be. And don't let nobody deter you from that. I wouldn't even tell them no more. Just walk in, <laughs> just walk in the knowing. Yeah, just yes. walk in that knowing, yeah. you know? Like, yeah. And they'll feel it. I they'll know, feel it in your aura. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. I'm intuitive. I say, hey, don't go there. Your stomach feel it. I said, we don't do this. I, I'm learning that now. Mm-hmm. I'm, or in tuned with with that now, so I'm I'm just going with that. Because mm-hmm, really, you know, really, they stop. They, they they try to mess with your frequency when they do that. Just like in the biblical text, Jesus would tell would tell them sometimes after he healed, tell no one. Well, don't don't don't, yeah. don't don't mess with the frequency. Let let it go. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's true. Yeah. Cause I people close to me look at me like I'm crazy. So I learned not to you know, say anything to disrupt my energy. And and now I'm by myself and I feel better. No one knows anything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just doing me, learning me, being in tune with myself, no mm-hmm. outside influence. And so far, so good. So. Beautiful. The reason why I have, I have this thought is this right here. Because if we look at the big picture, because you know, humans are always thinking, you know, humans always think life is, um, <laughs> you know, <clears throat> everybody think that life is human focus. You know, like, just because humans act up, God is about to destroy the world again. God is about to come because humans are bad. Uh, God, is, God is about to um, destroy the earth's fire because humans are bad. Like, what about the ants? The ants ain't bother nobody. The ants bite people, but they ain't bother nobody. You know? <laughs> we, complicate, we complicate our lives so much. We really do. And... <laughs> You would think about the air. <laughs> yeah, I'm being in nature and I learn you learn a lot from these animals and you yeah. in nature and look. So it, we com- we really complicate things. We really we complicate do. our lives. And this is why I said we're not even with all these material stuff that we complicate our lives with. That's what I'm saying. We we're not leaving with none of these stuff. So I'm just, I just want to live in the now. I want to learn. I'm, I love to learn. I'm very open-minded. Learn, apply what I need to apply to my life and just keep it moving. Cause you know, you never know when we're going to go. Enjoy the people that come into our, our um, frequency that we, we're connected with. Like I'm connected with you guys. I appreciate this moment. I've learned a lot, let me tell you. Yeah. You know, and I feel good about it, and just keep it going. I, I, I'm such a simple person. It's not even funny. It's, <laughs> That's I'm, beautiful. I think it's into a joke too. I think everything to a joke anyway. I'm just a, uh, I just make it fun funny. But think, I mean, but seriously, I, I, I'd be dead serious too. Though. I mean, just because I laugh, I don't mean, Yeah, serious. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we think seriously. We think because we rude. God is gonna destroy every bug. Race. You know how much bugs. Like, look at these fishes. Four fishes are swimming around, you know, poking their mouth out, having a fish face, eating yeah. fish food. And here we think that we're good. God yeah. just destroy them because of us. And, and you know, right. God knows all the hair on your head. God, But, you know, if we look at life, right, if you look at our reality, because we don't, we don't see the big picture. We see a human picture. But if you look at the bigger picture, we are on a, uh-huh. a freaking piece of rock. Seriously, and I keep saying this, we're on a piece of rock. Spinning around in, 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 in nowhere in space, somewhere we in the middle of space, some damn galaxy spinning around a piece of rock in a in yeah. rock on, on, on the big piece of rock. We are in this one little city or one country yeah. on one country in one city in one town in one house. Now, you think God is like just looking at you? 
from all the way, all these rocks up there, and he just focuses on you, and he counts your hair on your head because he knows you. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your mind is so oh my god really but, but what if but just what if since we are on this piece of rock by ourselves not knowing where the hell we are standing around like we damn losers in a, a, a room the sun all, all day every day just spinning right but yeah. what if what if the reason why we are put in that situation is because we are powerful enough to actually to to actually live on our own. What if we are powerful enough to change every every single reality? What if we are what if we were just put here in the, in the middle of nowhere because we could figure it out? What if we have the strength to figure it out? What if we do? Okay. I mean, seriously. I mean, you know what I mean? Because yeah. I don't think you can put us in a piece of rock everywhere. You know, in the middle of the damn sky that we don't know that every time we look up we see in a different place every time we look up like we say christ christ resurrected and he was ascended and if christ was ascended this way how the hell do we know where he was up because every time the world spin up is a different location right so which up is he at like where the hell is he at? right where did he go That's so right. is our is is our time to ascend our mind enough to realize that we are the christ consciousness and we are in the middle of nowhere on a piece of rock, and we gotta know our hair on our head, not no, not nothing else. Because hmm. maybe we are, maybe we are the God that we seek. Right. Yeah. Definitely, I believe that. That makes sense. You made it so simple, though, when you said the rock and all of that. You, you're a very simple man. <laughs> Because I never imagined it be us being on a rock, you know? Okay. Because in my mind, you, okay, guys, Kirk is the, the simple one. I am very, very analytical, technical, and kind of more on a deeper end. But it's good to have those different, you know, sides because, you know, we, we yeah, we can find balance. So, simple as the answer. Yeah, that's why I, with my complex mind, never thought of it. <laughs> I'm, I'm just being honest, though. I'm being honest because I look at all of us. I just. I mean, take away the Bible, take away the books, take away. All you know is that you're here. On yeah. this planet, so you're here on this yeah. planet, and you're you're here to learn. You you see the grass, you see all things grow, you see the animals, you see all this stuff, and I think they're all here for us. We all serve a purpose. Take what you need, and, and keep creating, keep going. It, it is. I, I always say I don't believe I'm here to suffer. I, I always say that I'm not right. here to suffer. I'm not here to suffer. What do I need to learn? And so I'm. I open my mind up, learning all these things, and take what I need. Cause you know, when you sleep, you don't know what's going on. You, you, <laughs> you know, I, it's it's so it's it's a lot. So I don't want to overwhelm myself. So I just try to be simple as possible. Ask questions, yes, but I do believe we create life. You know, we're a woman. We give we we give birth. You see, the man and woman come together. You create what you want. Just, and keep it going. Just mm -hmm. live. <laughs> so, okay. I want to know this about that part, about living and just being. So, if you're living and you're just being and you're not, you all could help me. I, I'm asking you for help here. And you don't, you have a, um, So I have this complex mind where I just said that I'm technical, analytical, and a little bit deep. So if you're just being and you're not um, you're not seeking for knowledge on this journey, do you think that you are going to evolve still? Yes, evolution is the yeah. Evolution is a collective consciousness. So even if you don't want to or not, it's not about you. You have no choice. You have no choice. 
Okay, it's either you evolve or you suffer. After suffering, you will see, that evolution will come regardless. See, no, but okay, well let me rephrase it then. Can you evolve without the suffering? Because I'm I'm good with the just being and not the doing. But I'm not good with just being and not obtaining the knowledge because of my analytical, technical self. I, 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 it's like my brain ever since I got out of college, it's like just been so open. I could look at a bird and wonder why his peak is a certain way. And I'll go, I have to go Google. I have to find out like birds peak and I just start reading for hours and and where do birds go at night where, why, why why don't we see them and I gotta google that and and it's just like a rabbit hole so I need to know about the knowledge part I mean those, I think those things are good to I think it's good that you want to know all these things I do too. but at the end of the day it, it's all about what is you our mind is so powerful it's, I, th- I, I consider my mind a little planet <laughs> You know, you, you create the little planet that you want, what you want on it, who you want on it. And it's based on frequency. You know, if you're on that frequency, you're going to, um, the energy you're going to attract whoever is on your same frequency. And you have that experience. It's, it's about experiences. You learn. I, I don't see people, the words that we choose to label stuff like suffering, I, I don't know. It's. Yeah. Because. It's why you learn to suffer? If, if you're a baby, you're born and you, you know, you, um, you, 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 you're trying to, uh, you touch a, a electric cord, you get shocked. I don't, I wouldn't say that suffering, you just get shocked. You don't know, you, you learn from it and you don't do it again. Like that. Yeah, but I'm... So, let me, ask, let me ask you a question. Mm-hmm. Suffering has to be in the picture because we all suffer. And then let me tell you, let me tell you why we suffer. Like, for instance, if you could, you could be in a, you could be in third grade and you fail that damn last test and you can't, you know, you can't go up to fourth grade. After a while, yeah, it hurts. But, but when next year comes and you're still in third grade and all your friends are in the fourth grade, you, your mind starts to F with you. You, know, mm-hmm. you start feeling the same. You start feeling bad. That's suffering. Suffering is a part. So when you suffer, after a while, you're going to be like, shit, I can't stay here. So I got I to gotta, I gotta do something else. It's like, or like in relationships. We suffer in relationships. Oh. And that's when, and when, when, when we suffer is when we know we need to move. Right. Either I keep suffering or I stay. You know what I'm saying? So suffering is a part of life, but suffering is created by us. We create suffering. We create the suffering, though. Yeah. Pain is inevitable, but suffering is a choice. No, the question came because I I started to think about how, like, the, the, um, maybe the Buddhist monks or the people that, you know, overseas that really don't do all of that. They, They, like, the people that just sit there, you know, we've seen them, like, they don't even eat, some of them, sit underneath the tree and just, they're just being. So, so they're not reading no books. They're, they're not just... You don't a, need the books. I'm sorry, say that again? Because you don't need all those stuff. You don't need so those things, but I'm just saying as far as my mind of my evolving process and the things that I've went out to seek knowledge on, I know I don't need it because I really came equipped with it already if I would just go within. But if I do nothing... Those things that you seek are fulfilling your ego. You're fulfilling something that you think that you desire. Here's the thing. I remember I said earlier, if you if you have a child and you put the child in the world without teaching, that child has to find his way. That child will find his way. Because that's what we are that that's what we do. But the problem comes when you need to unlearn all this crap that we picked up. Because remember, the journey of life is to go back to a point of when you was a child. And, and with all that, um, all that nonsense knowledge that we picked up, the point is to go back and unlearn that crap. Don't unlearn it. it. Trash it. Yeah, I see. I didn't think about it that way. You know, you know what I mean? And now it's time to take what you need for you to be happy. Uh, we know too much. That's why we can't be happy. And the crap that we know is garbage. Uh-huh. <laughs> it really <laughs> is. Kind of how I think, though. It yeah. really is. Yeah. 
I see. I didn't think so, about it like that, though. Yeah, you're. I see. But do we need to know all this information, like the birds and stuff? You don't need to know because, but you want to know because you want to learn your world that like you're living in. Nothing wrong with it. It's just a beautiful thing, but it doesn't help you evolve. Evolution is not about knowledge. It's about what it's you're not. doing. It's not. Uh, you know what I mean, like knowledge is knowledge is gonna come regardless. Uh, but yeah. how are you living? That living thing. Yeah, right. that's so true. Cause we we have so much, you know. Do you know how much? You know, like um, Henry Ford went to jail. I mean, he went to the court. Henry Ford, the Ford man who made the Ford, flew out the car, the Ford car. Right. And right. Henry Ford wasn't really educated. And one of the lawyers was trying to prove that he doesn't know anything. He's just rich. And he asked Henry Ford a question, and Henry Ford said, "Why do I need to know this? Yeah, it doesn't help me in any way." I know it's a question, it's a basic question that I should know, but if I want to know, I have you men have who work for me. Yes. Yeah, I have people who work for me that could tell me the answer. Uh, they have uh, 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 but uh, we as human, we have so much useless information in our minds and the things that we need, we, we can't remember. <laughs> yeah. You're right about that. And our jobs and religion and all of those things have us yeah. with that useful, I mean, useless information oh, in there. Yeah. And the crap that we know is what brings our spirit down. I mean, yeah. think about it. The crap that we hold on to is them anger stuff and then the paid stuff and that that past hurt and that past um trauma. We hold on to the crap that we don't need. And things that we need, we let go. Uh -huh. We let go of love, we let go of peace, we let go of, uh -huh. of, of all those stuff and we we hold on to anger and hate and you know, misjudgment and we we hold on to things that we don't desire and then we get surprised when we're not happy. Yeah. Mm. I mean, it sounds simple and it's very simple, but it is. we think that's difficult too. So you ask, people ask me all the time, how do I become happy? Listen, this is not a question that you need that, that as an adult you should ask because happiness, how do you get happy? I don't know how, I asked my two year old, she's happy. She don't need a <laughs> Real. That's what yeah. I mean. That's what I mean. It, it, it's it's so simple, but when we have a whole bunch of crap going on, simple is kind of hard to get back to. Again, you got to talk to crap. You're right. We want to hold on. We want to hold on to the crap. You're right <laughs> about that. Crap. It's hard to discover the crap. Dump it. You're right. But we get so attached to it that we don't want to dump it. Because uh, now, I'm sorry, I'm eating Tom Brands. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but this too, it yeah. good too. But it's like now, we don't, we feel, now it becomes a, so we, we, we are on this journey in life. We're on this journey. And as we walk, we see, uh, we see this thing and we pick it up and say, oh, now I'm a rich man. Now we pick something else up. Well, I make six figures. So we, pick, we, we, we pick something else up. Ooh, I'm in a, I'm in a relationship now. I'm married. And we pick something else up. Oh, now I am a this. And we pick up a, a, a degree. Now I'm a doctor. So, so now we have all these damn attachments on us. Uh -huh. And now life is saying, listen, release that crap. Just, just like when Christ told the rich man, listen, give all your crap to the poor. Uh -huh. Follow me. No, yeah. man. You want me to do it? You treat. You treat. Right. You're right. I can't do this crap. You're right. Because I know my identity. My identity will change. Yes, it but will. But sometimes we forget. But, yeah, and then we forget who we were before this crap came to our life. That's who we were. Yeah. But you know what? That's also scary to let go of those things, too, because you build so much upon the, that belief or that ego, that system the job or whatever it was because um i mean this might sound really really crazy or weird i had an experience one day in the physical reality where <laughs> my ego like on a on a trip like a um, conscious trip with dmt with in my consciousness um was um like about to astro travel away from this physical and my ego was like stripped from me and it was it felt in layman's terms like 
my arms and my legs, my ears, every part of me was leaving me. That was the scariest thing that I had ever experienced. And I said in a strong voice, get back here now. Like it was in trouble. Like, I mean, it could, it almost was like it was laughing at me, at the idea of me saying, get back here now. Like, no, we, we got to go and play. And it was the scariest experience that I had ever had. But along with that, leaving me at that pivotal moment, I realized that all of that thinking, all that me being a black woman, me having a physical avatar body, that none of that is really real. And it sent me on a trip that was like, it was just a conscious trip. I, I, I couldn't bring my body, you know? And so that could be scary letting go of those things because I know it, it was scary for me. And what I thought was happening was that I was dying. You know, it felt like physically I was dying and I was not going to um, see my children anymore. And so when the ego was leaving my arms and legs and, you know, parts of my body and my character that I had built so much upon, you know, going to school and getting married and having children, being a mother and stuff. And I thought about being a mother as my body was lifting away. And I said, no, put me back down now. I am a mother first. And, it, <laughs> and it's funny now looking back at the choice words that I use, but I am not a mother first. <laughs> right. I am right. that consciousness first, you know, I am that energy side of me, the spiritual side of me, not this physical. But that that could be scary for people, and it might sound so simple, but but it's a whole it's it's difficult. That's why people hold on so tight to identities that they create for themselves. I always think about it like your identity is it keeps you caged in, and one thing about being caged in is you're protected from the outside world. But then the other thing about being caged in is you don't get a chance to grow. You're you're locked in in, in one place. But people love to be caged by their identities, and that's one thing that's really really popular popular now about having an identity about everything. True. Yeah, especially how, you know, social media is right now, too. People want to be identified and seen and, you know, um, you know how they exactly. always how they always saying they, they want to go viral, so to speak, or whatever. I know, they, crazy. They crave it for that identity side, but getting more of that identity side is losing that, that, that kind of, well, disconnecting, getting further away from that conscious side, though. <laughs> It gets further away because it's, it's it's all about being more individual. When the entire point is, we're all connected. Yeah, you know, um, we feel like like Bridget, what you were saying. Uh, you see, it's scary to lose what you have built, and sometimes we forget to realize that what you have built don't take. You know, it, it don't go with you. It, that that crap is temporary as hell. It really oh, is. So yeah, temporary. it is. Yeah. Take it with you. That's what I'm yeah. saying. <laughs> it don't. And then the stuff that we we were not built with. I mean, the stuff that we we couldn't that we can't build, like the love that and and, and the body and the, the peace, like the stuff that 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 we came here with. That's the things that we give up, even though we can't build it. We cannot rebuild that. But the scary thing is not even about not. To me, it's not losing the crap because the crap is not real anyway. It's just, it's just a form of a reality that you your eyes create in, with your mind. That crap is bad. The stuff is not, it, it don't even work. You know, most of the times, the same crap that you build give you a whole stress. You know, you know we suffer what we built. Like, we built this house, we built this dream, we yeah. built this car, we, we built this life. But the thing is, when the car got a flat, you suffer. Now you upset, now you angry, now you're about to cut somebody out. You yeah. know? For the same yeah. power that, that was the blessing. The house, like the, your AC goes out and the AC is like $3,000. Next thing you know, you are mad at the world. Because your AC keep going out, now you, you're losing your peace for something that you built. 
and we forget we forget that what we built needs to be burned down sometime and start over start that shit over even god did it god got to the world over he said listen this shit ain't, this shit ain't working you have to you have to look at life because it's funny life is just ridiculous but it's funny yeah. because god even god the creator the one who created this thing this orchestrate this thing he said man f this i mean f you f all you are <laughs> the way you say things, dude, is really funny. <laughs> like, yeah. He said, Noah, if you piss me off too, listen, you you want your wife? Oh my gosh. Everybody going under the water. <laughs> So he started over. He started the entire thing over because it, it wasn't yeah. working. Now, did yeah. we say he made a mistake? I don't know if he made a mistake or not. We could say God made a mistake. Or he, but the point is, sometimes you got to start over because the identity that, that, that you have become, that the world has become, is not where you want to go. Start yeah. Over. Yeah. yeah. So you can't be afraid to lose what you built because what you built is not real. It's, it's temporary. And you, the things that you should worry about losing is your soul. You so the larger part of you, you write about that. Yeah. Cause I'm reminded of there's a them in that movie Neo when I think it was Mor- Morpheus that was telling him that the world as he saw it wasn't real, and Neo put his yeah. head down and he was looking back like he he was like, "Are you telling me none of that was real?" Like yeah. that that part right there just sits with me so much. Especially since my experiences too of you know astro traveling and leaving, it's 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 just like none of it. Like like my children, you sure my my children too? Like mm. it's crazy. It's crazy. It's real. Oh, I know. I like um um, Karen, Let me ask you a question, right? How yes. long? How long did you stay married? If you don't mind me asking. Sure, I'm. I'm open to that. Um, seven years. Seven years. Uh-huh. How long? How long did it take you to leave? To like say, "Eff it, I'm done." <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually, I honestly, I, I actually left. Um, before, and came back to the relationship just because I'm in, I moved from Connecticut, I'm in Florida and it's just him and myself here. But when I left him, I moved in with a roommate that I met through work. She found a boyfriend, she moved and I couldn't afford the rent. So he was like, why don't you come back and pay the rent? <laughs> you know, we split the rent. And this time I was like, I can't, it wasn't working. I was losing my, I, I just, so this time I just meditated. I went in and so I would say maybe a year. <laughs> After yeah, I left the first time, I went a year and then I just left first of March. So you said six out. years. Yeah. And how how hard how hard was it was it to leave like emotionally like how I mean I'm I'm sure that you haven't left all emotionally yet, but how hard. Yeah. It, it was it was it was very challenging it was very challenging but i what i did was i aligned myself with people like yourself because you helped by what you said it, it gave me more clarity my fear dropped because i was fearful of going by myself i don't have a family here you know i don't know anyone really outside of work i'm an introvert i don't do anything i don't go anywhere so that was the scary part for me because I left already, I knew I could do it by myself. It's just, it's scary. I don't have anyone else. My friend is with her boyfriend, so that was a scary part for me. So, so yeah. And this is my point because because I was married too, and that crap tore me up when I, when she left. I was like, God yeah. dang it, you just leave me like that? God, yeah. Dang it, I got that is mortgage and just all born yep. damn cars that you wanted. <laughs> yeah. But um. But the thing is, that's something that we built. We built a marriage, and we think God was in the middle of the marriage. God is not. I don't know where God is. To be honest with you, I don't know where He is. Me too. Know, it is, or she is, or her. I don't know what the heck it is. 
exactly. But we we built this life, and then when 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 the life that we built, you know, give us stress and suffers and stuff, are we still afraid? Even though we go into suffering and pain, are we still afraid to leave. Uh huh. We have to hold on to it. Yeah, it's it's the attachment, that fear and on joke. <laughs> that fear and on joke. No, but it came down to what I also I I put it in perspective, and I said, you know what? Um, it's a learning. Ex- I I had to talk to myself. It's a learning experience. Um, this man is teaching you maybe what you need to give yourself instead of what you're asking from this person. Just you need time with yourself. It's it's time to focus on you and. Maybe you'll get something right next time, you know. So that's where I'm at right now. I I needed this time for myself. So yes, and here you were in the frequency of what my of what I was feeling. Because now I'm starting to look at energy, you know, just use energy without words. Just the frequency I was feeling. You, I, I went on TikTok and I met you and I met Bridget. And I met Crone and. So I started looking, looking at stuff like that, perspective, look at my life as perspective. I thank the man for teaching me, you know, things that he taught me. It wasn't all bad. He taught me some stuff mm-hmm. and um, take what I need with me. I, I thanked him very much for teaching me stuff. Now he teach me that, there, you know, I, I, there's guys that I know what to look for. I never dated much, so... I'm like a baby. I'm just learning. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So I thank him very much. I, I don't have any hate or anything towards him. Um, but it's just perspective, man. Because like I said, I'm I, I like a simple life. I don't like to complicate things. And I believe that you you meet people for everyone is here to teach you. Everyone is here to teach you something. So that's how I look at it, perspective. And that help, that has helped me so far. That you know what perspective is the key. Yeah, if yeah. something is bothering you, change your perspective. Yeah. And do you know? Do you know your perspective is your reality, right? Yes. It really is your reality. But people want to hold on to the same damn perspective. And yeah. Have, well, just change the damn perspective. It makes yeah. you feel. It, it makes you I feel. Think it. Instead of being upset, yeah. Instead of being upset, you're not giving me this, you're not doing me. And I did that in the beginning, but then. Um, before I left, I, I told him, I, I didn't feel no type of way. I just, I just told him, thank you. you. You showed me what I don't need, what I need. And he didn't understand it though. <laughs> but I'm grateful. I'm very, very grateful for everything, man. Trust me. But the way that it's you explained, person. the way that you explain that relationship, it feels to me is the way that we should look at this uh, physical reality. You know, yeah. that we yeah. came for the yeah. experience of expansion. We learned a lot along the journey, but also to yeah. enjoy the journey because yeah. it's really all about the experience. And I look at it like we uh, we have the experience and we give our experience back to source or to the universe. And when, you know, that's what happens, I feel, like when we time out. Our soul yeah. lives on, but we give our experience back to source and source just becomes greater and greater. And we keep collectively creating a bigger multi-dimensional universe because we're feeding the source, so to speak, with our experience. Because yeah. if we look at it energetically, energy yeah. doesn't die, it's simply transformed. So anybody physically right. that's dying, they're transforming their energy back into source and source is getting bigger from it. Uh, and this is okay. why I feel like we all, we've been doing this for eons and why I feel like we've been here lifetime after lifetime. And so that there's, there's levels to it. After so many lifetimes yeah. of graduating from this dimension, I feel as though we get to go to other realms. Yeah. I haven't experienced the other realms <laughs> yet. Because I always go by my experience. I hear what everyone is saying. But if I don't experience it, man, I don't I don't know. I respect everyone, but if I don't experience it, I can't talk on it because what you have it, though, yeah. you probably haven't identified it as you have it Maybe. even when when you go to sleep at night, you have. Yeah, yeah. And the way you could tell, just simply, if, if you pay attention to the simple simplicity uh-huh. of it, look look at me talking about being simple, okay? Look at me. I'm growing <laughs> up right before everybody's eyes. <laughs> but no. For, oh, hi. I didn't see you. Hi, Rhonda. 
So if you pay attention to the simplicity of it, I'm going to let her speak. Let's see. Okay, there she is. If you pay attention to the simplicity of it when you are going to sleep at night, for example, you're uh -huh. going into, you're entering into another realm. Uh -huh. And so this other realm, you might have your little superpowers. You might, you know, be in two parts of the world. You think at one time you might could fly and da 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 da. But uh -huh. this is the part you want to pay attention to the fact that when you come back, when you're returning back to your avatar, to your body, you're opening up your eyes. The first 30 seconds upon opening up your eyes, you could you could remember what, vaguely where you were, kind of like the dream yeah. state, kind of. Like. But when them 30 seconds expire, most of the time, you don't really remember the dream. So I look at that as when you went to that realm, you tapped back into your consciousness of 100% of your brain capacity. And so in them 30 second time frame, you coming back down, you, you decreasing and you're going back to your 10% of your brain capacity in the human physical form. So you okay. are going to another realm. Okay. You, when you wake up, you returning back from it. Okay. I never looked at it that way. I know I, I have dreams, but that's it. You know, like I said, I'm just learning this stuff, so I'll pay more attention. I, I wasn't mindful of it, but I'll pay more attention and see what happens. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, that's what that's what the journey is about, is just pay attention. That's yeah. all the journey is about. Is just, and when you start to pay attention, everything just makes sense. Everything yeah. just starts to make sense. Everything just falls in, starts to make sense, and you're like, oh, shoot. But you know, my let me tell you how I'm at a place now in my in my journey that um, that I use three important words. Uh, I know I said this before. My most three important words is I don't know. <laughs> right? And I use it. I use it on a regular basis because yeah. if I don't know. I will look for it, but. Right. If I think I believe some garbage that somebody said before, just because somebody said it and somebody has, has some kind of number, you know, some kind of letters before their names, and we look at that crap like it means something. Uh -huh. And if we think that we know things based on that, then you don't know anything. You don't. Right. You really you know, don't. We have all this yeah, we have all this belief system, but we don't know. And the thing is, the the religion aspect. You want to say you know, because that's what you've been hearing all your life. So in right. your mind, I know this for a fact. All right. But if you knew it, in all, if you know something, it changes something or it affects something. If you know it, it has to affect something. And if we have all this knowledge, then and your life is still not how you want it, then it's not knowledge; it's unknowledge. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> or knowledge. <laughs> because if I know, if I say, if I know, if I touch this damn stove, it's going to burn my hand. And if it burn my hand, I'm going to feel the pain. If I know this and I still touch this stove, huh, did I really know this? Or, did, or was I being with that? Wait, am I slow? Like, say something happened? Like, uh, am I, something is wrong with me? I can't control me touching this stove or I just didn't know for sure. Because if you know, you're going to do. The thing is, we don't know. We believe. And when we believe, we go by somebody else's words. Uh -huh. right. So many of us really don't know. We believe. Believing is not knowing. Okay. Right. And like you said earlier, you said if you haven't experienced it, you don't know. That's like, right. hey, stop. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great story. Yeah. So you got to be able to say, I don't know. Right. I don't know. People ask yeah. me questions. Because if they think I'm conscious, and I'm like, listen, I don't, I don't, hell, I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. So yeah. would you say religion is believing and spirituality is realizing that you know nothing? <laughs> you know what? That makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> that makes sense because for in in a spirituality mindset, you always seeking something. Something always coming to you. Something always, is always getting deeper and deeper and deeper. Yeah, sure. yeah. So yeah, it's always an aha moment. You're like, oh shoot, that makes sense. Because I get those things in the shower. I've been in the shower scrubbing my skin, and I'm like, oh shoot, I just got this. That yeah. makes sense. 
Like, yeah. seriously, all day long I'm getting these moments and I'm like, oh, downloads, you know? Yeah. A bunch of downloads. I'm gonna love it. Yeah. I think it's the most amazing thing. But people yeah. asking the question, and I'm like, listen, man, yeah, how would I know this? Like, seriously, how would I know this? Like, how do <laughs> you, you think I know this? <laughs> Come on, man. I don't know. Yeah. On some crap, I don't want to know. Yeah. And I think because of religion also, um, because of religion, you know, we grew up and we are listening to the pastor. And um, also the first of whatever the pastor says, that's that's what it is. We believe that. So when we meet people and people tell us something, we automatically believe without questioning or experiencing it for ourselves. You know what I mean? Like we give our power away so much. We, we, we get influenced by people. Um, like, um, I mean, I, I listen to Esther, Wayne Dyer, you know, all these spiritual people <laughs> and they say stuff and I, and I listen, but I don't necessarily, cause I haven't experienced it. So yeah. if I experience a different story, but I haven't experienced it. So I don't right off the bat, believe what they say, not that yeah. they're wrong. Yeah. I just haven't experienced it. Okay. Yeah. So that's, that's how I. But I'm open to learn. And so if they say that's what it is, I'll try it for myself. And if it don't work, it yeah. just don't work for me. That, that is, it doesn't exist. It just doesn't work for me. Yeah. But I open, I listen to them. And, you know, <laughs> for example, um, people talk about story guides. Okay. That's what everyone says. So I said, okay, let me, how do I, how do I know I have a story guide? And someone says, Alyssa, I'm on YouTube. I'm, I'm anyway. I'm just lo- I love to learn. And she said, you know, you could just ask before you go to sleep. And I asked the name for my spirit guide before I went to sleep. And I swear to you, the name it, in, that popped up, the word Titan. That's all I saw. A big word. <laughs> mm-hmm. And that was it. That was the only experience I ever had um, with asking my spirit guide what their name was and. So that for me, that was my personal experience. So for me, I said that works <laughs> because I experienced it for myself. So I do believe that we have some type of entity around outside of ourselves or within our mind or, you know, but. Yeah, eh. I believe individually within our mind because we created, yeah. I believe. Yeah. Yeah, and you just but I asked, that's what it. it was. Right. <laughs> I don't know. So, yeah. um, like I said, I just want to, I, I, I'm here. I just want to enjoy the, the journey. That's my bottom line. Enjoying the journey, enjoying people that I come in contact with, appreciate people, love people, and create the life that I want. And and that's it. I think that's what it's all about. You give love to your, your family because we own nothing. Our kids, we don't own our kids. We're here to teach. They're like birds. We, t- we teach them. And after a while, they fly and go about yeah. their business. You know? That's so true. <laughs> you just, just live in the moment. I'm enjoying this moment. I'm learning so much. I'm, I'm grateful. You know how long I wanted to come my club, clubhouse? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I want somebody to... Yeah, so I'm grateful for this, and this is how I look at it. Like um, in your mind, you say, "Oh man, I want to, I want to go on club, club, clubhouse." It for me it doesn't happen right away, but it does happen because that's what I wanted. Mm-hmm. So I believe that we could create yes our life. You, you just meet right. it's just in alignment. You meet people, you know, and it works. So I look back on these things to remind myself. Yeah. You know, when I get impatient. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, because that's your superpowers. That's you creating, you know. Yeah. You're walking into yeah. that manifestation. If something just yeah. as simple as this here, you know. Yes, I'm telling you. And it feels so good. I'm like, you know how long I wanted to come on Clubhouse? And here, I asked Kirk. And, and you came on. I was like, please help me to get in. <laughs> so, <laughs> and right. it just happened. So, and I heard yeah, you. Say, yeah, but let, let me ask you a question, um, I want to know your thoughts on um, like what what Cameron was talking about as far as um, um, story guides and stuff. Like, what do you like? What do you think about that kind of stuff? 
experienced it. <laughs> I thought, you know, when she said that, I was, I wondered if you were going to ask me about that. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I kind of created that question up. Um, <laughs> well, yes, actually, yeah, because um, I believe that we're connected to all, and and so. I wouldn't give it one particular name. I believe like, for example, you know, my grandmother and my papa, they are okay. deceased, for okay. example. So I look at them as being guides too. I look at my higher self, you know, like as a guide. I look at source energy and my, uh, my previous lifetimes, all of that energy, not person per se, that energy is a guide because Love connects all of that energy together and we are all connected through thought. So yes, I believe in that. I believe in um guides. I believe that that something said kind of voice that we hear is like a guide. I, but I also believe that riding down the street in the car and I see a billboard that resonates with me, that's a guide. I believe that you all on this phone conversation you are my guide i believe i left on purpose all of these guides in my physical reality to help me evolve because in my reality <laughs> all of y'all are a reflection of me everything uh -huh. in my reality is a reflection of me so i made uh -huh. use of it before i came to this time and space reality that you all were to help me you know like when i move you move and vice versa so uh, yeah that's how i look at it what what do what you think you her? <laughs> um yeah i think i want to hear what jay thinks first okay <laughs> i'm miss jay oh, i guess she's not here oh she's mrs a but she's not oh she's muted i definitely oh. think <laughs> I definitely, um, I definitely think I agree with Bridget. Like everybody's a guy, and I don't know. I flirted with the idea of there being, you know, like spiritual guys and things of that nature. But I don't know how that works out with like other beliefs that I have, you know. Uh, so I definitely. Um, and I don't know. Yeah, I don't really know if there are or not. Actually, I'm, I'm like Kirk. I, if I don't know, I don't know. But right. I, do, I do believe that when um, there are people in your life that um, that help you on your walk, like like you guys were saying last night, like it's a reason that we're all here together at this moment in time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Frequency. We're all on the same frequency at this time. Therefore, we're connected. We're on the same frequency, and I, I just this energy. That's that's it. I think without putting labels on it, it's just energy. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's true. No. Uh, what do I think? Yeah. Um, to be honest, <laughs> so <laughs> here we go. Um, <laughs> Conscious <laughs> Kurt. <laughs> Here's the thing, right? So, I think people see me as conscious more than I do see myself as, as conscious. <laughs> um, I think I see myself as just on my journey of, I don't know what that is, but um, to be honest, I don't know. <laughs> see? see what I mean? Here we go. <laughs> but, but, this is, but this is what I'm saying, that our mind is so powerful and our mind, each individual is our own world and our yes. minds our own world. Yeah. And I like I I I experience when I first left. I said, "Okay, so we got what's your name?" And in, in my head, when I was sleeping, all I remember was the name Titan, big bold Titan. That was that was it. That was my experience. So what I'm trying to say is, we each we're connected, but we eat. We each have our own world. Yeah. That we own create individual believe journey. that. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, and, and you know what? I've heard many people. Um, like I said, I I've, I speak to many conscious people, and I've, okay. I've I've heard the majority speak about spirit guides. Actually, that person who just came in here, I, I think she just followed me in here. Um, she's a very conscious person. 
And she uh-huh. speaks about spirit guides all the time, the spirit guides uh-huh. and you know ancestors and stuff. But for me, for my, I, I, I honestly haven't experienced, or maybe right. I haven't looked into that part yet. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. But is it, I mean, is can it be true? Of course it can. Because I, I don't know. Hey, there's so much crap that's true that that you can't even understand. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So I don't write it off. I just, I don't think I tap into that place. Right. What do y'all think about? Because I often think, like, I hear these voices in my not not literally not you know, but I I think these things, like, it's like sometimes I'm asking for a sign. And it's like, I get a, I get, like, I have intuitively, I understand certain things about myself. And I wonder sometimes if it is like a spiritual God that's like whispering stuff into my subconscious. It could just, you know, all be my subconscious, you know. But I wonder about what you guys think about um, synchronicities and like, um, angel numbers and things of that, that nature, like when you see four forty four everywhere or eleven eleven. You know what? I think you just messed me up with that one because um, I take it back. I do believe. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. I take it back. Oh my god! <laughs> because, when it, because when it comes to spirit numbers or not, the numbers, I definitely believe it. I, I, I listen. I I don't play with them kind of stuff. If, listen, Thank when my journey you. began years ago. I start studying numbers because I'm, I'm far, I'm deep into, um, you know, numerology and astrology and stuff. So now when I see angel numbers, I'm, I, I know exactly what's going on with me. So you know what? I tell you right I, yeah. I'm, and that's I'm another thing. Numbers. We can, so we can continue the conversation about, you know, the angel numbers and stuff. But since you mentioned uh, astrology, I've always been pretty skeptical of astrology. And I still think that that's just, another big thing that people use to be, you know, for identity and to be individualistic. And um, I think it gets overused in some cases. But with that being said, I have pulled my birth chart. And it was a little too specific um, and a little bit too um, accurate for me. And I, I don't know. And I guess one way, that it would make sense for me, that it could make sense in my head, is that everything has a season. So things grow better at different seasons. And so I guess that would make sense for us too, as humans. Like the time we were born would um, contribute to certain life paths and certain behaviors and ways of thinking. So I guess it would make sense in that case. But I mean, what do you think? Me? Yeah, you're going this Okay, so okay. You right. so I'm about to tell you my my own personal experience, okay? Uh birth charts and all this stuff. Um zodiac signs. Now, even though I'm a spiritual person, I believe now that I'm a I'm on the journey of enlightenment and I'm, I'm an awaken, I choose my identity and I choose my own right. things that I that I put to make me. So my Scorpio stuff and my bird chart and stuff has no effect on me anymore because I have chosen because uh-huh. that's I'm not in my nature of yes. That, you know what I'm saying? Like that same path anymore. So now I choose whatever I need. So I create my own chemistry. Yes. I created my own element. So I choose this element. I choose this, 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 and this. No, I have the power uh-huh. to choose my own destiny. Yes. Uh-huh. So I'm not, you know, but however, for a person who is uh, not, who don't see a choice in their life, then yeah, I think, I think it makes sense. I think it me because every day has a specific, um, every day has a specific frequency. Every single yeah, day. Yeah. Uh-huh. Every year has a frequency. Yeah. And if you was born in a certain day, in a certain year, then yes, some things in your life line up to that day, that that, that carry the same frequency. So it do make sense. It does. It does. Yeah. I agree. Because just like we how we were talking about evolving from religion to spirituality, I believe that there's levels of you know evolving even with with our signs, for example. You know? I agree. So like, you know, like I'm an Aryan, right? And so 
that element is fire. Okay. So I'm supposed to be mastering that, that, that energy. Right. But at the same time, you evolve to where, okay, I understand that I'm that fire element, but wait, I have to master this water and this air and this earth too. I can't just stay focused on just mastering the fire, right. you know? And, right. and so, um, even with the, we were talking about the number of synchronicities, I feel it's tied to maybe, you know, when we were born and all, and we'll get these signals or numbers to let us know that we're in alignment to our journey, you know, to evolving in our physical reality, just like a, a reminder, just like we were just talking about um, the guides. If we uh -huh. feel like they exist, then they send us reminders, letting us know that we're in a perfect alignment to where we want to be, you know, like, like a, like almost like a, a card, you know, like when you're traveling and you send, send a card to someone that you love, you know? Uh, true. Hey, Austin, what's going on? Hey, bring, bring, bring Austin up. I Maybe did. I don't, I don't think he wants to no. speak, but I, hi, Austin. No. Thank you for joining. He's just <laughs> listening. <laughs> Bridget, can you make me a moderator? I just want to see what it looks like. Well, wait a minute now. You know I'm new here. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> I okay. think you got to click on my profile. Jay, okay, okay. make up. Okay, okay. There you go. Cool, 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 cool. So what did I do, though? She's a god. So wait, what did that do now? You still look different. I mean, the same. You control, you control yeah. who speaks and who don't speak and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, yeah, you take care of that part then, Jay. You good. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man. But you know what, though? But so, um, like Brigitte said, I totally agree with you. I totally agree. Because I think as, as we, the more conscious we become, I get, I believe that we get to write our own story even more. I think. Yeah. Exactly. We are, yeah, yeah. I think before we are, before we become conscious, I'm, I, again, I, I don't like to use a, that term consciousness because it's, it could be taking some damn, you know, black woke and woke black and yeah, black okay. consciousness. I don't like to use the word. Yeah, yeah. so it's all of them. In tune but, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, I think, so I believe when we get more in tune with ourselves and our um, creator, yes. I believe yeah. we get to write, the, we get to create the life that we want. So now the signs that we are, that that we were born with these not these birth sign and stuff. I think it plays less and less role in our life. It really does. I agree. Uh -huh. It really does. And uh, but some people swear. Some people, and I understand why. You know, I understand because they I like get when people read. Yeah, yeah, they get stuck in the identity of it all. Not, you know, um, the cage of it all. Because it can, it can be enough to help you. I think it can help you understand yourself and understand the people around you. But it's a starting point. But people, people tend to stay at starting points. Yeah. Just like the Bible. I think the Bible. Can y'all hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. I think the Bible is a really great starting point. But you see how people, you know, have used it to further their own agendas and stuff. So they take it to literal. Yeah, they take it to another level. Yeah, and that's what we were talking about. We were talking about like graduating one day from religion, you know, and evolving to spirituality. And then there's in spirituality with consciousness, there's levels to evolving from there. And it, it's, yep. it's okay to go, you know, down that rabbit hole to explore all of the different conscious levels, but you have to keep on mastering and keep on evolving, you know, take what resonates with your soul because yeah. everything that will resonate with you. You know? right. And that's what I tell people, like what I tell people all the time, believe something that helps you. People tend to believe things that that don't help, that just keep you chained down. And it's like, even if that was true, even like when it comes to especially like conspiracy theories and stuff, I know like the Illuminati was a big thing back in the day. And, you know, there are always going to be conspiracy theories like that. Like we not. And that's another thing, too. Like, how do you guys feel? Because. Some aspects of spirituality want to say things like um, the world is controlling us, like governments are controlling us, or they'll put things on TV to um, further their own agendas and things of that nature to basically like hypnotize the rest of the world, keep the rest of the world sleep. But 
I don't I just don't believe that at all. I think it makes sense. I think it makes sense because if you're sleeping then you are good. okay, so here here okay, let me let me share this in a very easy way. Um I <laughs> Okay. So listen, if you are not conscious, right? To be honest, um, Jay, I, I, I've done this on a regular basis. I've done it to even Grigé. I could send you a thought, and you could think it's your thought, but I'm sending you this thought right now. And you're going to feel exactly the thought that I'm sending you. It's like, it's like hypnotized. I can hypnotize you by sending you a thought from where I'm at right now uh-huh. to exactly where you are. And I've never seen you. I don't know who you are, but I could do it just because now I know your frequency that you own. So I could send the same thought to that frequency and it hits you. No, you don't understand this. If you are not conscious, you're going to do exactly what the thought is telling you. Now, if you are not conscious, the frequency that surrounds you, you're going to fall into. Okay? So it, you are being controlled. So when the media send out this stuff and when people tell, saying all this stuff, because when, you know, like when the media starts, everybody who is not conscious, they start too. And when you have seven, when you have six billion people with the same thoughts and the same feelings oh, yeah. and the same emotion, oh, yeah. the collective consciousness of the of the entire world is 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 uh, what uh, is affected. Is affected. Uh, yeah. Affected. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So so yes, they they, I, I, they have that power. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, but I only over the sleep ones. I just feel like I just feel like it's not. I feel like. People think it's a conspiracy and that it's done intentionally. And I, number one, I feel like if, even if that is true, it's less um, less sinister than what people make it out to be. And secondly, I feel like, I don't know, I feel like like we all have our own power. And like mm-hmm. so, some people get so caught up in that that they give away their power to, to the fear of it all. Yeah, it's a belief. It's it's a belief, and I think you're making contract with the media. If they put it out there, and you see, you you believe it, you're making a contract. It's a part right. of your frequency, your reality. So it, it's it's out there. It's just if you're on the same frequency with it. So conspiracy theories, whatever you want to call it, it's it's out there. You're just not on that frequency. Like I don't watch TV. I don't mix with it. I don't. Mm-hmm. I don't but it's there. I just right. I'm not that frequency. Is you know. There's a lot of things that reg- that a lot of conscious people don't do. Like for instance, like you said, TV, news, yeah. cut it out. Yeah. Beats, cut yeah. it out. All these flesh and dairy products, yeah. cut it out. All these things yeah. vibrate you on a certain frequency right. that you do, you don't even understand that when you stop and you feel how you're gonna feel, you're gonna be like, oh shit, what the hell have I been doing this for the whole damn time? Right. Why would I? Why was I doing this now all this time? I could have been at a higher frequency. You know, you know, and all these, it's, it's a lot of things that we do that we don't understand how we're going to feel if we stop doing it. It's just that we right. were born, we were born into certain things and we just continued it. Right. And even when, when, when we become adults, but listen to this theory that I, that I just created while, while you were talking. Uh, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> listen to this theory. Here we go. Why, why you on all way? Why are you all always laughing when I'm when I'm talking about my theories, man? Okay. Okay. <laughs> your, theories really got, your theories got me thinking, like you know, hey, <laughs> it could be onto something here. <laughs> Do, don't you hear? Don't you hear, Mom? Please, <laughs> let's let this be over really fast. <laughs> okay. Picture this right here, right? Picture this okay. right. Here. Okay. Now let's look at life, okay? Look at life as the breath, like just like just like when God breathed that breath of life into Adam and he became a living soul. So the breath is a life, right? Uh-huh. So so imagine that perfect breath. So let's say you're taking five deep breaths, perfectly fine, right? You breathe in perfectly fine. You add some garbage to your life, and your breath speed up. Like, well, I don't need that damn breath. Let me let me. I don't need that damn speed. Let me dump whatever I just added to my life. Then you're breathing fine again. You're breathing perfectly fine. Then you add something else to your damn life or to that breath. And your breath spit. You know, now you, <laughs> and you're like, oh, shoot. What should I do? Something is wrong with me. No. Maybe 
we're going to be so conscious and so aware of whatever that we add to this damn life so that as soon as we realize that we our chemistry is changing, our breath is changing, because every time our life changes, our breath changes. Mm-hmm. If you are anxious, you breathe fast. You, uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like having a uh, panic attack, you breathe it fast. When you're depressed, your breath changes. Everything that you're going through, your breath changes. The average human is not aware. What if that's the secret? To be aware of the breath uh, that you uh, take. When, uh, when is the last time? We were aware of the breath that we took, in sure. terms of the breath that we take. And I ain't talking about just when we have that 10 minutes of meditation, that 10 minutes crap through for 24 hours, it ain't not that, no damn thing. The ratio sucks. 10 minutes out, out to 24 hours, that's garbage. Yeah. See what I'm saying? You're right about but, that. But but what if that what if that breath is being looked at so hard that every time you think something, it changes. Every time you say something, it changed every time you add something to it a relationship a boyfriend a girlfriend uh, what if we could just realize that what if and how do we know what's good or bad to us is when the breath changes i don't know where that came from i don't know where the hell of theory came from but what if what if we pay attention though you know how life is going to be but instead we want to dump the damn breath and keep the crap that makes it speed up. <laughs> yeah That's what I'm saying. we want to do that <laughs> yeah the breath of life yeah all the clutter and, in life. And that's what keeps you conscious, is the breath. Yeah. Because you always got to take deep breaths. Hey, take three deep breaths. <sighs> okay, I feel better. But yeah, we got to, we, why, why are we going to always be told to take deep breaths? Because we forget. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Because we, not, we live in like that flight or uh, fight mode seemingly because we are so stressed. You know, we got, we multitask so much now. We're evolving in, 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 you know, more into computers and stop using our thinking actually, you know, and a lot of, I wanted to add to what, um, what Jay was saying. Also, a lot of those conspiracy theories, theorists that, that speak like on YouTube channels, whatever, that supposedly woke. I don't, I believe that they're halting their journey in a sense because they're dwelling on a secret, on a frequency that's really low if they're constantly regurgitating those things over and over again. Uh-huh. Exactly. Uh-huh. And for me, on my... And that's what I'm saying. Oh, go ahead. The, that, that was really it. And for me, on my journey, I just can't talk about that. I can't talk about other people. Uh-huh. Like, I just don't feel right, you know, on that frequency. Like, no, I'm not. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, even if we are being controlled, right, then that means everybody's being controlled equally. You know what I'm saying? So there's still a way to move within all all of the quote unquote control that's being um, brought against us. There's still, you know, ways to create your own reality. So if you get stuck on that, I mean like like um like was Carrie Ann said, like you're you're giving leeway to the belief and getting stuck in it. Right. Well like, I understand it though. Believe that huh? I understand it, though. I just choose not to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, because you might as well believe, like I said, believe something that helps you. Like, it doesn't help you to believe that your entire movement is being controlled, that you're being watched constantly. Like, how does that help you? Have you ever heard heard the saying, believe kills and believe cures? No, I haven't heard that. Explain (laughs) that. You're just saying, it's just just what it means. Believe kills. And believe okay. cure, so yeah, you can exactly. either believe that you you can heal yourself, or you can believe that you need the pills to to um to heal yourself. Yeah, it it doesn't be... Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh no, go ahead. I, I'm just saying it. I think it all boils down to belief. You you we each have our individual mind to create the life that we want. Like for example, um, I have a I have a son, and he's. You know, kids. Every each individual kid, they act different. Some are some learn faster than others. And my mom was like, you know, it's like he has ADHD or whatever. Take him to a neurologist. So, I, because you know, I listened to my mom. I took him to a neurologist. You know, they were, they were, he put stuff on his head. You know, these little sticky wire stuff. And he's gonna tell me that my son is like he, he's he's not hyper ADHD, but he he's like at a low like he's slow and i told the man i said no he's not 
Right. Like, I, I didn't I didn't believe that. I didn't make contract with that. Because no man outside of me, when it comes to, like, his, mind you, I don't play. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't, I don't take nothing negative people say about my kids. I don't, I don't agree with nothing. So when he told me that, I was like, no, he's not. My son is fine, healthy, doing his thing. You hear me? So mm-hmm. the point I'm trying to make is th- these things are out there. It's, it's there, but <laughs> if I don't believe it, if I don't make contract with it, it's not really my reality. It just, it's just not. So it's mm-hmm. not going to work. Mm-hmm. So conspiracy theory is, is out there. But we just don't involve in it and just keep it moving. Just. Mm-hmm. But I believe that that part. Like go ahead. No, go. No, I'm, fin- I'm finished. Go ahead. I was. So, and for me. Go ahead, Brazil. No, 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 no. Go. <laughs> I'm not. Go. So here's the thing for me. Um, even if we are. Well, I don't believe that we all. Well, I mean, you can't control the conscious mind. But, however. Even if you can, uh, well, or even if something is going on. So belief, like, like I said, belief is really not enough because to believe something is to just, you know, you you have heard it as something that you don't have proof. Because a belief, you don't have proof for a belief. Uh, when, when you know something, it's because you have proof. So knowledge brings proof. Belief okay. is from, you know, even like how they say, faith comes from hearing. Yeah. So it's like belief comes from hearing. So you heard it, and it makes sense. Now you believe it because our beliefs was handed down to us from our grandparents, from our great grandparents, from and and from the slave masters. Hell, they came from a place that we don't even know. Mm-hmm. Right. So a, a lot of our belief system came from people that we don't know. So, but we just hold these beliefs. But there are things that we can do within ourselves to control our own energy. Yeah. So when things come to us, we block certain things or we create certain things. So. I say a belief by itself is not strong enough because who we are, we are creators. And when yes. you're creators, you got to do something to create something. So yes. belief system, like for instance, they told me that my son was weird. I beat him, he stopped. He, he just stopped. He's just like right now because he needed a spanking in school. So I I brought him home and I spanked his ass. Now he, he, he's just, he's, you know, he's, you know, <laughs> you're going to be weird. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> but I'm just saying. Uh, <laughs> but I'm saying there's something that you gotta do, and it, when and, and, and when we figure out that one thing, it, but the thing is, we don't know what to do yet because up to this point, we just believe we don't know. Uh, so, so even if you do something, you you know, and if you don't know something and you do it, then you still have doubts because you believe it, you still don't know. But when you know it. Doubts go. Doubts is gone. There's no doubts. Exactly. Exactly. You know what I mean? So we gotta find that knowledge. See, the rich white folks have that knowledge because they have done it over and over again. These old tradition has that knowledge. Those ancient traditions have that knowledge. We was handed down garbage. We were handed down Jesus and and Vicks. You remember Vicks vapor rub? Oh my and God! Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I would think. I would think. They would say so much. Yeah. But see, that's really why I look. I go to energy because, with my knowing of what energy can do and how you could transform energy, I can. I bank on that. And so, so let's let's bring it back to the conspiracy theorist type thing. So, okay, yes, I understand there are people at that frequency, but I also know that if I attune my frequency to a higher level, I can actually cause other people to come to a higher level with me. I'm going to have some reflections. I'm going to meet people in a room that are like-minded like you. Even though we have the others that are outside, maybe paying more attention to maybe Derek Jackson type stuff going on or conspiracy type theories that's going on or low frequency things. I believe that this universal force has everything in balance at all time. It sh- it, it's law that it should be in balance. So even though there are limited few over here on this frequency, on this particular group right now, I believe collectively there are other groups that are like-minded too to to be in balance with the fact that we have conspiracy theories here because my knowing of energy is that all things are two-sided, you know? So 
because of that knowing for me, I find peace in it. And I don't worry about the conspiracy theories. And because I know that I am not this physical body anyway, I still don't worry about it at the end of the day, because when my physical body times out, it is a knowing to me that I live on, that I do not die, that I'm an eternal being based upon my experiences of astral traveling, of my dream, my vision, and because it just sits so heavily on my heart and in my mind. So this is how I create through my heart and my mind. That's my electromagnetic form of energy of creation. So that's law for me. And this ain't no, no religion type energy. This is what yeah. I know. Yeah. yeah. You know, conspiracies of, okay, so conspiracies. So if you understand the, the chakras, these seven chakras, when you, you know, do you notice that these conspiracy theorists, people are very knowledgeable, right? They are very smart. They're, they're, they're educated most of the time. Yes. And just because you're educated, that means you're, that, that doesn't mean that your chakras are still aligned. So a lot of times when a conspiracy, when, when these conspiracy come up is that your fifth chakra is off balance. When your fifth chakra is off balance, which is your third chakra, you are seeking truth. And you're seeking truth from so many because your fifth chakra is all about truth, your expression of truth, right? Yes. And when that's off balance, you start to find, make up things and start to seek for certain things. And you start to get your information from different places and you start questioning things. And as you question things, you speak things not knowing the truth because you are, it's not balanced yet. But many times after a while, you will pass that fifth chakra and go to the seventh, I mean, the sixth chakra. So you know what I'm saying, which is the third eye. Mm -hmm. And when you reach to that place, now the conspiracy is died down because now your understanding is different, it's changed. Now your download is from the universe itself instead of nonsense. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So the fifth, yeah, so the fifth chakra is all about truth. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, you see, do you see like people will post stuff on Facebook all the time and I always want to argue with people and I always want to argue and I always want to post things just to have debates? That's yeah. because the fifth chakra is off alignment. Yeah. And need that validation. Yeah. See what I'm saying? I see. I see. I never thought about it like that. It make a whole lot of sense. Yeah. Because our life journey is based on the chakras that we are on. So every every age that we are, we are on a certain chakra. Like a two year old is on is on the first chakra, the first seventh, uh, the first or second chakra. Yeah, and when, yeah. and when you're the teenager, you into the rebellious crap. You, you know, you're doing like you, it's like you just re get retarded or something. And then you know <laughs> you get in it. You know what I mean? So right. so it's like as we age, we get up to the different chakras. So. When it comes to knowledge, it's the same thing. Because when you come to knowledge, as soon as you start getting awakened, do you remember? Do you remember when you start to understand the universe a little bit, and you start to get conscious? Everything you learn, you have to tell somebody, or you want to write it on Facebook, yeah. or you want to comment something, yeah. and you want to share your knowledge. Is because now you're in a place that your knowledge is coming from different places, and it's not true. So you kind of shake. You can't speak clearly. You don't know how to speak. It's not coming out like how you. Oh my come out. God! You can't really explain it. Yeah. yeah, because that fifth chakra is not aligned yet. It's not. It's not there yet. That's how you know I, I mean? used to be. I remember that. I used to be just like that. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. But I mean, that's that's exactly. Well, I don't know if you understand the chakras, right? Um, Carrie and Jay, yeah. and I stand here on some chakras. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you understand that each chakra has a role in our life. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Think that. Yeah. The the true chakra, which is the expression chakra, um, is is the is the throat chakra. And uh, like for instance, when you when you you know like you know like some of us like especially in relationships, we don't want to speak the truth. We don't want to tell them how we really feel. We don't want to yes. express ourselves because we think that they're gonna hurt. We're gonna hurt their feelings, or they're gonna walk away, or they're gonna slam the door. So, and then as, as as much as or like for instance, have you ever watched a movie with someone and then you want to cry like the like like when I watched The Lion King and I and Mufasa died, you know, I wanted to cry, <laughs> but I couldn't because, you know, I'm a yes. you know, you know, yeah. and then my girl, you know, and then she's looking at me, you know, because she's crying, so she's looking at me, and I'm looking like, damn, she look, if she had taken my eye, <laughs> and, then, and then since I hold that tear in, my throat began to hurt because now right. I, I can't express myself. Yeah. So my throat, because that's my throat chakra, yeah. it's not telling the truth, it's lying, it's not, I'm not expressing myself like how I want to. Yeah. So, we fail for that. So now when we can't express ourselves, that's when we gain weight. That's why, why our thyroid is objective. up. Everything that we have in life is a, a part of our chakras. So the truth expression, 
with these all these damn theories and all this stuff it's from the throat chakra uh, okay yeah that's so true and what really was happening is those cells are dying they're being cast away because yeah. at a cellular level of their energy too they're alive and and they came forth you know because <laughs> Everything is, is it has this level of consciousness to it. It came for for an experience and we're depriving it of that experience. So it's being cast away and dying. Facts, facts. Crazy. We just learned something that we, we learned a lot tonight. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, we did. Definitely. We did. It was we're gonna come back here tomorrow. Yeah. This was good. We're gonna be like a late night little conscious show here. <laughs> Cause um for the last two nights we've been late. This will happen when it's juicy, you know, the conference is juicy. Yeah. You know? There's yeah. no distractions. But it's it, sleeping. Yeah. yeah it's it, quiet. It's quiet. It's good timing for me though, because you know, you know no visual here and you could really be relaxed and calm and everybody else yeah. sleeping. Yeah, you can have your bonnet, your your bonnet on. Oh my goodness! Yeah. No, no bonnet. <laughs> you know, I, you know, with with by us talking, you know, I I love myself more because I knew I know with with well when Kirk was talking about your chakras, I knew mine was off because when I was talking to my husband, I wasn't able to express myself. He would get upset. He would. I just knew it was time for me to go. It was time for me to go. Yep. And with, you know, Kirk did help because it wasn't easy. But with him talking and posting and it resonated, I was like, okay, man, I, I really got to go. So it, it did I'm help. You, man. Yeah. And you know, like when you can't express yourself, I'm telling you, your, your, your throat chakra, I mean, yeah. you start, and then when you can't, so every chakra below it suffers because when cause energy goes up. Exactly. Like, like, yeah. Yeah, like Bajir was talking about. So the from the cooling, I mean, from the cooling experience, or even just from the chakra spirit, the yeah. energy it's like it's like a tree. The sun shines down on the tra on to the earth, then the the, yeah. you know, the earth gives the the root um, damp um, nutrients, and and then the energy goes up to the leaves and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Same yeah. as us. Uh -huh. the, yeah. the 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 energy comes from our root chakra and it goes up. So when the energy is blocked by your throat chakra, it can't go up any farther. And then it kills the ones that's below. Yeah, it does. So all your chakras, all your energy centers become off alignment. So now yeah. you're scared, you're worried, your 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 me power gone. You know, so your solar chakra, your solar plexus suffers, and then your Definitely. heart chakra suffers because you you have all these negative emotions in you, yeah. sadness and all this stuff. So it's like the entire body dies. Especially. Yeah, Especially yeah. that heart, because that's really the main one. When you're trying to open up chakras, you should start with the heart one for, you know, heart energy first, because it is the most yeah. powerful form of energy that could unclog the other chakras. And I want to share with you before we go that um, I used to have um, my um, throat chakra used to be out of balance. I used to be really well, I still say I am. Kurt tells me that there's no such thing as an introverted person, but I still feel as though I'm introverted. <laughs> Anyway, people don't believe me anymore because I, you know, I talk on different platforms all the time and I look so cool, but I still feel, you know, like I need to recharge after I talk to people, you know, I'm saying that because when my throat chakra was um, out of balance, I had uh, thyroid issues in the past and uh, how I was able to resolve that, it was annoying that this all started on a spiritual realm. It starts in the spiritual realm first for, because those cells were dying and I wasn't speaking my truth and it manifested in my physical reality as thyroid issues. And, to, uh, and so what I would say to you is to, to start speaking from the heart yes. and the heart will allow the throat to come, you know, become active and in, 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 in produce um, live energy and you'll be able to speak your truth. And then the truth, just like the biblical text says, will set you free. And in yes. doing, speaking your truth while you're speaking to a man, a trick that I want to share with you is remember that men are physical, mostly like they're, um, they're about doing, they're about, um, <laughs> hands-on type action, like driven, like, right? The masculine energy. 
and feminine energy is more of a intuitiveness and um, femininity feeling, for example. So this is what I learned along my journey about talking to men or expressing myself to a man. Speak from the heart, but use the words I feel because I feel to get you into your feelings, your feminine energy, your intuitiveness. Like for a man, when you ask him what he's doing, he'll say, well, I'm at work, I'm chilling, I'm da-da-da-da. But when a man asks you as feminine energy what you're doing, you need to jump into I'm feeling. Like, what do you feel? Like, what? So for, if he says, what am I doing? Oh, I'm sitting right here feeling so comfortable on this live, this group meeting. It felt so amazing to talk to people that were like-minded energy. I was so relaxed on my pillow. The bed felt comfy, blah, blah, blah. You get into that feeling so he could have an experience with you. And at the same time, you are speaking from your heart and you're sounding feminine. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Okay. Damn, that's kind of deep. (laughs) And actually, actually, it helps a man to fall deeper in love with you because you are sharing your heart. You're opening up your heart chakra to him is what you're really doing here. So you want to get him you know, about a hook into that heart and you want to hope, yeah. open it up for yourself, for your, you know, for your journey. So I just wanted to leave that with you that I learned. Hmm. So the way to my side is not through, it's not through his stomach. It, oh, no, okay. boo-boo. It ain't through the stomach, boo. Uh-uh. <laughs> it's through my stomach. You could, for me, I'm yours forever. Whatever, dude. Don't be lying to the lady. Come on now. Don't lie to the lady. <laughs> So yeah, this was amazing, man. This was amazing. Thanks, uh, thank you guys. Thanks everybody for joining. You want to say anything let's before we go? Yeah, let's come up with a topic. Let's come up with a topic tomorrow. I mean, for tomorrow, what what we're we gonna speak about? Because we need to keep this going on a regular basis. Yeah. We're all getting fed. Yes. Um. Oh, tomorrow. Topic. I don't know. Um, what about we just come on and see what vibe we on and just pick up where we left off? I don't know. Yeah, that'll probably end up being what, hap- being what, hap- what happens. But yeah. let's talk about manifesting. Have yeah. we talked about that? Like, let's and iron that out and sounds good? Sounds good to me. How about you all? Yeah. Okay, cool. Manifesting. Kurt is really good with that. So, yeah. Perfect. I need help with that one. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's one. Yeah, let's do that. So, who was, that, who was the other person that was in here with us last night? Oh, Danae. She's not here tonight. She didn't come through tonight, but I'm going to pin her for tomorrow. We'll do it around the same time, right, Kurt? About 1130-ish? That's when we started? God damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My, my time is different from you guys, but, you know, I'm... So, oh, I'm Central. I'm sorry. I did it 11.30 Central. I'm Eastern. Yeah, I'm so, Eastern, too. Okay. Uh, I don't know the difference between those things, but I'm, <laughs> right now, right now here is 12 o'clock midnight right now. Where is everybody from? Because all of y'all have accents. Oh, yeah. I'm from Florida. I'm from New Orleans, Louisiana. Bridget is a poet from, from the Orleans. <laughs> I am not a poet. No, I'm not. <laughs> I just get passionate when I'm speaking. That's the Jamaican man, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Jamaican. <laughs> That's what I like to call him because he act like one. But go ahead, Kurt. Yeah, he, sounds, he, he sounds a little bit like Jamaican, but I could, he's, he's got a little accent. I could hear it. I'm from St. Vincent. Yeah, I could hear it. Yeah. But this was but yeah. awesome, guys. I'm grateful. Thank you. This was nice. I appreciate this. Hey, uh-huh. Aston, make sure you come back, man. And make sure you, you're ready to speak tomorrow to Ben. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome to come back, Austin. I appreciate you joining us. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Thanks, everybody. Wow. Bye. Wow. Good night, everybody. Bye. Okay. Be blessed, babe. Goodbye. Mm-hmm. <sighs>